Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Viore, Rocket Money, Delete Me, and Helix Sleep. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. <clears throat> I'm Nate Bargetzi, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, right. Dusty Slay. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Everybody's here. We thought we, we thought you were going to be late, but you made I it. I made it. Yeah. I drove 45 in a 35-mile-an-hour zone, I thought. I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. That's a school it. zone, too, right yeah. around here. Well, I was on a different road, but I saw a budget truck <laughs> got pulled over, and I thought, yeah. you know what? I'm going to get picked up here. Do you, you use a lot of different roads. Well, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I think my Google Maps is programmed weird. I find myself on all the wrong roads. Yeah. I mean, it's the right road, but I'm like, did we need to be on this yeah, road? It's just gotten to know you a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And it just knows this guy, this guy doesn't want to be on the main stuff. Yeah. They're like, there might be some leaves on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to take you near the leaves. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I figured you just went a different path every time to keep them from. Tracing well, it. yeah, but they're all tracking us now, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, no, you. there's no getting away Thank from you. it. Get that. All yeah. right, I'm getting all delivery. Thank you. Coffee. We're doing this at uh, it's five a.m. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> yeah, this Mine's is great. Some tea. My voice. I think my voice is getting beat up. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Or just mind, I think, to cough away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mind? She just goes. She just goes. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. I'm in a, I'm my own functioning man. Sometimes mm. I don't know how to do anything. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. My voice just got bad. I mean, it's it's uh, it's not bad. It's just you know, we've done a lot of shows. A lot of shows. A lot of crazy. I got my uh, Georgia Tech Go Jackets. All right. I'm happy to find out that's what that means. <laughs> yeah. Because you were getting Go Jackets yelled. Yeah, because John Chris was on here mm-hmm. when you guys mm-hmm. did Go Jackets, and I didn't know what that was. And yeah. people would say Go Jackets to me, and I'm like, I, it, it, <laughs> you know that I wasn't on that episode. Yeah, we got a uh, uh, we got a picture of uh, sign uh, next to Go Jackets. I, th- I think I have all this. I was like, oh, we'll show this. And then I didn't do anything with it uh but we went to we got to go tour the uh uh golf facility met the golf team they have like their golf thing right in the middle it's like really in the middle of downtown atlanta they have like 14 acres and it's just uh, there's a little par three and it's their own practice facility and stuff probably simulators and stuff in there too. simulators yeah, yeah that's awesome. they can hit driver and it goes it's like 360 they said wow which is I mean, these guys can hit it that, mm-hmm. you know, far. So, but the whole thing was, uh, they, they were very, very cool. Uh, we saw the football stadium, saw the locker rooms and they did, they really nice. And like, she gave us a big tour was, was hopefully meeting Chris Winky, which would have been fun. Was he the coach? Chris, yeah. He's coaching there. And then, uh. Remember Chris Winky? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh it's about my age. <laughs> yeah. Is he? <laughs> He's not that old. No. But he was yeah. like 32, wasn't he? When he was a quarterback. He was or 29 older. or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh yeah, I don't know if he was gonna like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Sorry, Chris. Yeah. Chris could have went two ways, but could have went that way, could have went your way. Uh but it's yeah, so but they were having like recruiting or something like it was like recruiting meetings, so when they heated up, get get it out to meet in time. Uh, would have been fun, but when you were talking about hitting the ball three hundred sixty yards, yards. you talking about? I thought you were talking about golf. Yeah, he was, that's yeah. what I am. But you're talking about a coach now. Well, I switched it up. Okay, why we also toured the football. I got real facility. confused. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, because I do not know. I do not know a lot about Georgia Tech football. Yeah, that's, go Jackets. Yeah, I don't know a yeah. lot about them. Yeah. Go Jack. It's in Atlanta. Yeah. They're the Georgia team outside of the SEC. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah they, they were in the SEC. They were in the SEC. Yeah, there's a line in the Alabama fight song mentions the Yellow Jackets by name. Oh. Send the Yellow Jackets to a watery grave. Wow. Because it used to be an in-conference rivalry years and years ago. Wow. A little fun bit of history for you. Yeah, yeah. it would be like Vandy. You think about it, Vandy and Georgia Tech and Northwestern, like if we had our own little 
conference going. <laughs> Yeah, like a Stanford? like a yeah. like a smart school conference. Yes, yeah, Stanford, Duke, Duke. You know, do our own thing for what? Like a trivia competition or sports? <laughs> no, no, for sports. Like a Southern okay. Ivy League. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that would yeah. be fun. Oh, that would yeah. be good. Yeah, Southern Ivy League. The SIL. SIL. <laughs> I like that. I don't support Georgia Tech because they beat up on Cumberland a little little too much in football. Oh, when they won the big game, two hundred twenty-two to nothing. Yeah. What? They made a point. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're yeah. not recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, I mean, they ran their big thing was the option, and he was like, they ran that. I mean, they do. They had Calvin Johnson. Right. He went there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they've had uh, obviously a lot. Of Demetria Johnson, right? I think he passed mm-hmm. away. He's from the Broncos. Mm. The guy that died. Demarius. With, Demarius. Thomas. Yeah, Darius Thomas. Right. Some, yeah. A tough career Calvin Johnson had then, huh? Georgia Tech to the Lions. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ugh, can't catch him. Hall of Famer, out. though. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, he's great. Right. But Megatron. Yeah. Well, he was, they said he was like a four star recruit out of uh, high school. And, you know, I don't know. Georgia Tech might have been good then. The Georgia Tech, I mean, they won a championship in 1990. Mm-hmm. I think they shared it with Colorado. Yeah. But I mean, that's not that long ago. Yeah, Calvin Johnson, the four-star recruit out yeah. of Tyrone, Georgia, two thousand four, thirty-seventh ranked wide receiver in the country. What other schools were? Oh, yeah. Georgia, Miami, and Notre Dame. No interest. <laughs> wow, all right, that's you know. Bummer. Oh no, I guess he got an offer from all of them. Yeah, I mean, I'm he's sure. He's not interested. Yeah, he he, he's interested. not interested at all. Yeah, I bet he was going to, well, he's from Georgia. So he visited, took an official visit at Georgia and Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Couldn't bother to come up to South Bend. He did. And check go. it out. He did not go. He never did an official visit. Yeah. What a bummer. That's a lot. What a loss. Dude. And yeah. then he ended up right. in Detroit. Hard so maybe it's a little Michigan, uh, Notre Dame rivalry. Maybe, going. maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we were in, so we did shows, Evans, Georgia, uh, two shows, State Farm Arena, the crazy. Hawks play. Crazy. How many I saw shows were there? All in all, this weekend was about 50,000 tickets. Wow. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, Evans and Evans, you know, Evans might have been 2,500, 300, 30,000 or something. And then, because it, it was a th- beautiful theater. It's brand new. It's, that's Augusta. It's like, I mean, they don't want, it's a town. It's not Augusta, but it's a, essentially, it's a part of Augusta. Like, uh, But a uh, great place. The crowds are so good. And then, you know, especially these big arenas. I mean, in Atlanta, we did a thing that I haven't seen. Uh, for From January on, I'll be in the round, in the middle. Like you've seen the Bridgestone Arena pictures, I'll be in the middle. Uh, this one, I had people behind me, so they sold. Oh. Uh, but this wasn't an in the round show, so but they sold tickets. I didn't realize they did this, and I got there and I, they were like, "Well, there's people behind you," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and then there's tickets and they're sitting right behind me. They're like, they're it's a it's a rear view seat, partially obstructed view. Kind well, of. now it's people. kind of rear view. Yeah, there's a big screen in front of them. I I almost think they weren't bad. Like if you think of seats, mm-hmm. you're like, I mean, you're pretty close. You're, I mean, I'm never looking at you, but you're looking at the screen, and you're been, but they're right there. Like it was, uh, and I've never done that before. Yeah. Someone posted on the, I think the fan page. I can't remember. If it, were you in Tampa this yeah. weekend too? I can't remember if it was Atlanta or Tampa that somehow the arena messed up the seating. They had like 10th row center. There, whatever seat they had, it didn't exist. And they posted their photo and they were off to the side in a corner, like up high mm, uh, at yeah. your show. I don't know. And it was the, it was the, they weren't blaming you. They were blaming the arena. Yeah. They were actually cool about it. They're like, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. But they just said the seat didn't exist. It, they got sold. Uh, oh, man. Well, thanks and for th- bringing it up on public. <laughs> those, uh, are the, those are the Brian Bates seats. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me a lot this weekend, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was my seats. And then someone said uh, somehow when Nick Thune was on stage. You're like a walking review. You're a walking <laughs> Yelp. That just goes. <laughs> Everything is just go ahead. Bates advisor. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you a couple other things I read about <laughs> your show. 
Well, somebody's got to. Yeah. That your dad's mic was going into Nick and he was yeah. hearing you, your dad backstage. Yeah. Yeah, that that's happened. Fun. Oh, that's fun. That was because they mute. So they, when my dad takes, because my dad has to walk on with the mic, um, like on his ear. Because he needs both hands yeah. for magic. Yeah, a hand right. free mic. And uh, so they, but they usually they just got to mute it. So when he takes the stuff out, it like when he un- turns it off and all, uh-huh. it wouldn't pick it up. Yeah. And it just was a mess up. And they did so. Nick was up there, and it was coming through the monitors. <laughs> and then Nick just kind of Nick Thune just played with it, and he did great. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad for those people. Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, I don't know. Like some of that, just, I don't know what's going on. Right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if you buy tickets too, I, I I'm not saying these people did this. I have no idea. But you know, be aware of like uh, when you buy tickets on that second market or whatever you're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that's you, you you get out of a control of really anything you don't know what's going to happen uh i think every, i've had i've had it happen where i bought tickets and right you get there and i've had double two tickets sold yeah where you just sit there like at a uh it was a long time ago dude uh florida tennessee football game in gainesville yeah i went with all my buddies and then we bought tickets and it was like these people had these tickets <laughs> and the other people had their tickets and everybody just had and then everybody just squeezed in uh-huh. you know but uh but yeah it was uh it was uh it's wild man these arenas are wild and uh super super fun everybody's so nice it's great it's great yeah well i was uh, a little bit different i was on the st- i'm still on the christmas party <laughs> circuit <laughs> uh i did do a show um <laughs> yesterday in knoxville at three o'clock in the afternoon don't try doing a show at three o'clock in the afternoon in Knoxville. You cannot sell tickets there. Uh, uh, why? Why? Yeah. Because <laughs> didn't you just do that? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I just did it. <laughs> and sold it out. Yeah. Now I was opening for uh, Karen Mills and she basically sold out the Bijou Theater. And it was that's a great, oh, wow. it was that's a great awesome. show. And um, so that's where I was. All right. I had, a, uh, I had a gig, dude. I had a gig at noon today. Wow. Oh, really? Corporate gig. <laughs> yeah, dude. Those are the best though, because you're already. Uh, this was worked. not the best, but yeah, I know. I know, but it doesn't I know matter. The, the feeling is the like, feeling yeah, is I've like, already done stand up today. Yeah, I bombed horrifically for thirty minutes already. Uh, today, that's so I'm kind of I'm in a second gear. You bombed, yeah, yeah. Or, or or was it just kind of a weird environment? Well, I don't want to blame anybody. Okay, okay, it was not a perfect situation for comedy, and I did not do well, so it was a perfect storm. Can you describe the situation a little About bit? About 250 people in a room, very long and narrow. Mm. Mike's situation was not good. Brought up by the DJ. They're oh, yes. eating lunch. It's uh, noon. Mm. Uh, pretty bad, dude. Yeah. Well, how'd pretty, the DJ bring you up? He goes, we got a... Well, well he, he did a bunch of things. He was a nice guy. He did some stuff wrong. But I don't think that hurt me. It might have hurt me for 30 seconds, but he brought me up. Aaron Weber, this guy performs at the Grand Old Opry. Aaron Weber. I don't think they knew a comic was coming up. They're trying oh, to eat lunch. Oh, he just brought you up as performs it's at the kind Grand of, Old Opry. Yeah, it's a it was, bit confusing. They were like, where's this guy's guitar? I know. And then when it's just the guy talking, it's a bit of a disappointment. They got, but, they're like, this guy's explaining this song <laughs> for a while. Yeah. <laughs> 30 minutes. Just get into it, man. Yeah. If there the were a guitar. Just clapping just to be like, let's help him out. Yeah. If it went, I mean, it was going so bad. If there were a guitar on stage, I would have picked it up and uh, started yeah. singing <laughs> just to shift gears a bit. I had to do 30 minutes, five minutes in i i did the calculations in my head i thought if i if i get off now i don't think they would be upset i mm. think they'd be a little relieved if i yeah. just did five minutes the people who booked you yeah because it was like you can see people be like you know what i mean you see people in the crowd be like they hired a guy that's not good this uh, stinks and i have 25 more minutes left but sometimes five minutes in you and you know they don't like it it's like it's almost like a punishment now for them. It's like, you don't like me? Well, I'll be up here for 25 yeah. hours. I've seen Dusty yeah. do that in yeah. real time. Get I didn't want to turn spiteful. At one point, there was one table in the front with two guys that were looking at me. And so I just kept mentioning, I'm killing with these two guys. And at one point, I go, hey, the back of the room, y'all, I'm killing up here. And I look back, and this girl in the back just goes, yeah. Oh, oh, just oh. boos me from the back. I was like, yeah. oh, no, dude. A magician had to go up after me. And we crossed paths. I immediately left after I got off stage. Oh, yeah. Oh. Immediately left. And I passed the magician. And he goes, 
and I go, good luck. And he said, I respect you, brother, Yeah. <laughs> as I walked out. And then I got in the car and drove here, and I got a phone call that I forgot to grab the check. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. so you got to go I got to go dude. back. I got to go back and look them in the eyes and grab that check at some point. Mm. Anyway, they're like, that magician was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But just remember when you get the jack, look him right in the eye and go, I had a great time here today. Yeah. I had a mm. great time. This was a lot of fun. One mm. of my best shows. Did you say tell him to keep it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah. Back. Just I'm take, good, man. Just keep it. Yeah. I don't want to come back and see yeah. everybody again. I sat with a table in the back waiting to go up, and these guys sat down there like, You the comedian? I go, Yeah. And they go, Oh man, we're pumped, dude. I talked to him for a while. They were nice guys. And then as I was exiting, dude, they didn't look at me. That's why I don't want to see yeah. anyone yeah. before the show. No yeah. people before the show, all after. Now that being said, I was in Chattanooga at the Comedy Catch. It was great. I had I met a lot of people. Brought you some leaves. All right, Dusty. You bring did you bring them here? I got the leaves for you somewhere. Okay. They're in my car. They brought Nate Sour Patch Kids. They brought Brian Insurer Breakfast uh, oh. Shakes. All right. So I have stuff to give you guys. Those crowds were great. I want to tell you one quick story. So late show Friday at the Comedy Catch. This table sitting in the front, and they're the the worst table. It's just what you don't want. It's a group of like four four guys. They all work together. They're hammered. They don't know who I am. You know, they're just, let's just go in and see this. They made the whole show about them. They were awful. I, I hated their guts. Mm. Okay. I played with them enough that I think they might have had fun, but they were the worst. Mm -hmm. yeah. The worst. Um, so it's like a whole thing. We talk about it the next night, dude. They come back oh, no. to the Saturday Night Late Show. <laughs> I was standing in the back of the room, and they walk in and we're, like, "Are you kidding me, dude?" The other <laughs> comics are like, "That's the table." The oh front. no! And you know the uh, the staff of the comedy catch is great. They don't know who this table, so they seat them. They're right up <laughs> near the front again. I was, you've got to be kidding me, dude. And I want to say this: they were great that second show. Wow. They weren't drunk. It was almost like they came back to apologize mm. for the night before. They didn't laugh because they had already seen the show. They're sober yeah. now. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, they liked us a yeah. lot less. Wow. But like, they oh, sat right in the front and they were great. Yeah. The second night. It was almost like they were like, we ruined his night on Friday. Let's let him ruin our night tonight. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. to balance yeah. things yeah. out. It's like a cat bringing a bird to the <laughs> <Yeah>. door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when that when a cat will bring you, yeah, that's like exactly a little, what a little they sacrificial did. offering. Yeah. yeah, they just came and sat. And I, I said, did you uh, talk to him. I talked to him after. Yeah, yeah. I said, y'all were great. Thanks. It was just kind of a, a mutual understanding of we've now the universe is in balance again. Yeah, you know. But dude, I was so mad when they walked in the second. Time. You almost think, uh, just buy the tickets and don't go. Yeah. 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 That would have been great. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, all the other shows were great. Knoxville was great. A lot of people came out. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Great weekend. Mm. I hate to harp on just the two bad experiences I had. Well, but, uh, I, I like hearing it. Those, yeah. Fun yeah. Ones. Uh, <laughs> that was just super fun. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that corporate gig and yeah. that stuff, man, that warms my heart. Uh, yeah. To I like seeing it. Uh-huh. I like it. I like it a lot. It's just so. <laughs> yeah, it really takes you back, you know? It does. It You're takes like, you back. I, I mean, sold 50,000 just... tickets this week. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to remember those times. I got yeah. booed before 1 p.m. today. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, oh. At one point, I go, I am good at comedy. I said yeah. that at one point. <laughs> Nobody that's a, agreed. Yeah, that's I, good when you, yeah, when you know, you go, guys, it is, my career is going good. Yeah. Like, don't there's no you're... evidence of this today, yeah. but trust me, yeah. Oh, it's going man, all right. that's so funny. That mm -hmm. just, yeah, those are the mm -hmm. you know, and it's crazy because you like you think you're going, it's going to happen once, you're like, nah, it happens a lot. <laughs> you get you happen so much <laughs> that you get not bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> you get, that's the weird part uh -huh. that you just have to figure it. Yeah, you're like, I, I don't want to do any more of these corporate gigs, and then it comes up, you're like, I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. I'll yeah, take I would do it, it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like that, those same guys. Uh, I'll come right back. You come right back, and they go, <laughs> This guy again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta get my check. <laughs> I would do, I remember doing that. I don't know if I said it, the commun uh, community college, you do nooners, is what we'd call them. And a guy, I was late, 12.02, I showed up. 
And he goes, you're late. I go, I don't. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then uh, he had a box with a microphone. He took it out, <laughs> handed it to me. He goes, I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. And there was no, hey, there's a comedy show. Like, you don't see any posters. Where are you? In like a cafeteria? Out, uh, somewhere outside of Chicago. Uh, <laughs> I brought uh, Ben, uh, uh, what's his name? That wrote his Ben Bergman, Big Bergman. Yeah, Ben Bergman came and he I had him open. I remember that, thankfully. And so, I mean, he goes, I mean, so I mean, I make him go. I mean, there's no, we're in a stage in the corner, we're just in the cafeteria. People he said, Where were you in the cafeteria? And you go, Somewhere outside of Chicago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so yeah. kids are trying to eat lunch. Yeah, they're yeah, eating. I mean, there's right. no, you know, and look, no, I'm like, a community college guy. Uh -huh. There's a bunch of different ages in there. No one uh -huh. really cares about school. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's, and I mean, I have to go up and the guy's just like, I, I, it was, you know, like I was going in a prison and they're like, you got to entertain them for an hour and the, the, the warden leaves. But there's no like, hey, there's a comedy show starting in 10 minutes of everybody. No. <laughs> That's like Lexington, Kentucky. They would have a, a room like that where you would be in there doing comedy and there would be free food. And people would come in there and get the food while you're on stage and get the food and leave. Yeah, the Tom mm. Sobel gig. Yeah, they wouldn't even... They didn't come in and go, oh, there's comedy. I'll yeah. sit down and eat the food here. Yeah. <laughs> they get the food and leave. Uh, what was the gig you did for the apple cider? Uh, oh, that was Red's Apple Ale. Oh, Red's Apple Yeah, yeah. yeah in, in, in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Big conference room. I mean, it was like, I was. it was every, whoever, whatever beer company owns Red's Apple Ale, it was like all their brands in one giant room. Next to me was a, uh, like, I don't know, uh, a dunking booth. And the other was like a DJ. <laughs> and I'm on a high stage behind the bartenders. <laughs> Two young girls. I was like, who's your favorite comic? They were like, Kevin Hart. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you're not going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, pretty bad. Uh, yeah. People, nobody knew yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. I was just up there. And I, I started calling people out by their names on their name tag. And one lady yeah. was like, what are you doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. God, I'm singing. And that's yeah. It's <laughs> you'd rather be in the dunking booth. Yeah, at that yeah. Point, yeah. You know? That's you know, that's the special part. I mean, I really do. Even though I'm sorry, it was not fun. I love it. I love hearing it. But just because I know it's you're on, that's the right path to be on. Because yeah. you either that path, you have to be just down this path of just you got to get where when when you're up there, it's really insane. Well, because when someone thinks they want to start comedy. And they're like, I'm going to go do comedy. And they go to open mic, right? And say they stay in open mics and whatever. They can be bad. They're not as bad as when you go alone. You drive. There's no one to talk to. You mm -hmm. don't have anybody. You drive by yourself. And then you're on stage. And people don't even know you're on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and, you're, and then you're having to do your act. And you're uh -huh. just, and you're in your joke, you know, you're yeah. just sitting your, your jokes like Olivia and I just, and <laughs> nobody is, nobody's even looking at you. Like, and you could, you could just walk off stage uh -huh. and no one would know. You could just go to them and go like, Hey, I'm, I just did 30 minutes. And they'd be like, yeah, hey, I felt like five minutes. You're like, Oh, yeah. it felt like I yeah. thought you did longer than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And jokes that you would do the night before in the comedy club and just murder. And you're like, I'm oh, the yeah. best I was thinking. I'm I was the best thinking, comedian in the world. I was thinking two things. I was like, I did the same joke in Knoxville. It was great. Yeah. And it just, they did not care at all today. But I was also thinking, I can't wait to talk about this in the podcast in a, a couple hours. It's kind of what yeah. got, got me through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Anyway. Yeah, to get done, to already be done for the day, to already do a set is... Yeah. Man, that's nice though. Yeah. I always like that. I always felt even. I mean, I mean that one got bad, but even if it's <laughs> yeah. bad, you just feel it's like you worked out. Right. You go like you just got up. You like I've already got all my stuff done. I've already the won day. the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the worst with a corporate gig for me is like when I do like a like some of my newer jokes that I think are really good and it doesn't and it, it bombs and then I go all right I'm about to hit them with some of this old stuff that's a real classic yeah. and then you do that and it bombs you're like oh I got nothing yeah. I got nothing <laughs> all right you get a little bit of greatest hits the crowd all right I'll pull it out <laughs> yeah yeah this will get them yeah and you're like oh dang. where were you this weekend i was at the liberty funny bone in uh cincinnati liberty yeah. township ohio since it's a great club 
It was great. I had a lot of fun. I also finally brought these, uh, I don't know, months ago I was in Des Moines, Iowa, and this lady brought us all a Ooh. Texas Roadhouse Ooh. gift card. She was a very nice lady. She all said right. her husband didn't want her to do it. And, oh, why uh, not? All right. Well, well because right. it's, you know, it's probably his money, and uh, <laughs> or at least the family's money. <laughs> and uh, he's like, don't give these guys these gift oh, cards. Oh, wow. But yeah, she gave us all a gift card. It's, it's money. A, it's a, I don't mean hit, you know, but I mean, it's the family's money. This I mean, is, yeah, I think a family going to Texas Roadhouse, it's his money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, like, I love Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, yeah. so do I. And so she was very nice. Thank gave, you. And I've had them in the truck forever, but I wanted to give them when we're all here. Yeah. Oh, uh, thanks. Man. I, yeah, I got I, I got some nice gifts this weekend for y'all that I left on. But the, the shows this weekend was great. Had a lot of fun. That club's great. The Funny Bones are awesome. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. Yeah, you have a special coming out. I do have announced a special it. coming. Yeah, announced it. Netflix. And, uh, yeah, I really thought, hey, I've announced this. This will really turn the sales around for yeah. this weekend. And and it did not. And uh, mm -hmm. But I did not sell 50,000 tickets. But <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, did sell. All that. I just I don't know what to say. I did sell <laughs> I did sell 50 to a couple of the late shows. So that was mm, that was good. That's not bad, dude. No, it was great. I had a that lot of fun. Solid. Yeah. I actually, I, I like, sometimes, I mean, uh, you know, of course you want to sell out every show. But it's like, I like. Sometimes when it's a small crowd and they're mm -hmm. all a little drunk, because you just get loose with it. And then I, I'm riffing and I'm just talking about all kind of crazy stuff. And that's fun to me. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, uh, I have a Netflix special coming out on January wow. 16th. All and, right. Uh, big time, yeah. Big so time. very exciting. Congrats. Uh, yeah. I mean, I recorded it in May in Knoxville and I've known... You know, for some, for a little bit of time that Netflix was going to pick it up, but I didn't have a date. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know, I was like, so I didn't, I didn't talk about it, but now it's out and very exciting. Yeah. So I'm pumped. It's, it's going to be, be great. great. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's an hour of comedy that I like. And I, my, it's my first thing that I've ever gotten to film that I've really got to do it in the South, right? Like every time if I do, you know, The Tonight Show or Jimmy Kimmel or I did a Comedy Central thing and even the other uh, Netflix half hour, it's always New York or LA, yeah. which they're great. But I, you know, the South and the Midwest is where I learn to do comedy. Yeah. It's in your so, pocket. Yeah. You're in the pocket. So here. it was fun. I did the Bijou where you were at this weekend mm -hmm. with Karen Mills mm -hmm. and uh, it was hot. Yeah. I love it. It looks good. It sounds good. It looks the way I want it to look, and uh, I'm pumped. Yeah, dude, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's awesome. exciting, man. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, our last episode of the year where we're all together because we got to do some episodes where some of us can't be here. Mm -hmm. And one of my predictions for 2023 was that you do a one hour special and put it oh, out. And all right. Oh yeah. Boom. Yeah. All right. You did yeah. it. All right. Let's what was your prediction for Nate again? Well, Nate, uh, in, in retrospect, I wasn't even thinking. Yeah. Right. I said you'd win a Grammy for Hello World, which the way that, that it came out, you wouldn't even have been nominated this year. So yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. And I didn't get nominated for for next year. But I also you, found out today I did not get nominated for Golden Globe. Globe mm -hmm. So uh, well, It makes you feel any better. We didn't either. Our Critics' <laughs> Choice or anything else. <laughs> so yeah, you really nailed it, Brian. <laughs> Well, you've exceeded uh, any prediction yeah, yeah, I could yeah. have ever yeah. had for uh -huh. 2023. Yeah, I would say make some more predictions for me. You know I'm 0 I mean? for 2 for um, you. That's okay. Um, well, I want to say real quick before I forget, Danielle, the manager at the Comedy Catch, listens to the podcast yes. and um, took objection to all your swim talk. She was a collegiate swimmer. She's trying to get a one-on-one -on -one competition with Dusty. Oh, okay. Started. She was yeah. like, I would smoke him. So, Well, I uh, like that. Well, I mean, everybody <laughs> thinks they can swim yeah. faster than she me. She swam in college. Dude. That doesn't matter. I'm, she can, yeah. I swam in college age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And I, you know, somebody uh, uh, brought me uh, a, a fan of mine uh, brought me a swim medal, and I forgot to bring it today. He brought me up, so I've oh, you know I cool. now have a medal for swimming, and that? someone brought me a swimming cap. Yeah, uh, so I'm ready. Yeah, people. Are, I mean, I think we've got a lot of offers of people we could do it at a lot of places. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, people are into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll race Daniel. I'll get up from this table and race Daniel. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean, let's go. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Well, she's in Chattanooga. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, let's go. Well, we're flyer up. <laughs> yeah. Just show drive. It's a short drive. There you go. Yeah, shorter than flying, probably. Yeah. My prediction for you for 2024 is 
you'll star in a movie. Now, it won't be out in 2024, but you'll at least shoot it. In 2024. In 2024. Yeah, that's going to be my prediction. Okay. I mean, there's nothing left to do for him. I know. Uh, you'll sell out yeah. a theater. <laughs> <laughs> you'll host Saturday Night Live. No. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot left, so I'm going to say movie. Let's hope so. White House Correspondents Dinner. There it is. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do that. Could yeah. Ho- you could host an award show. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I, I think I would enjoy that. I'd like to try it. You'd find a way to make it fun. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. I like, to, I like it's fun to go, to, like, if you get to do some of this stuff. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know. You know, we got a lot of stuff that we're working on. A lot of stuff comes and goes. It's, uh, yeah, it's all going, yeah, it's all going great. It's all, it is, it's for, like, they was the Grammy thing, the golden, like the golden globes came out. It was announced today and we, I was like, you felt good. And I just didn't get nominated for mm-hmm. anything. And that stuff's hard, but it's not hard. Like you really, you, you can feel yourself. You don't really care that, you know, you're like, yeah. this, this isn't what you're doing it right. for, but then it's also like, and this is the first year for a comedy, right? Yeah. So at least and, you can't say like, ah, I always now how this. would you feel yeah. if Dusty's Netflix special wins a Grammy next year? That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just I wouldn't kidding. like yeah. it. <laughs> you wouldn't like it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking to win any Grammys. Yeah. As we're talking about it, I think about the old Eminem song where he's talking about, you know. You think I give a, about a Grammy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, it's just fun. I, I love that. Uh, that song was great. Most of you critics can't stomach me, let alone stand me. Yeah. Right. There. Yeah. I think always people, but everybody does like to win. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even when I'll he take the Grammy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't, you know. I just want to, yeah, I dude, I love stand-up. I love, you know, this weekend, I was like, I just love it so much. I love hearing people laugh. I love trying to write, you know, like doing this hour and just like, it, I mean, it's so fun. It's mm-hmm. so, it I get fun. pure joy. Yeah. When I'm up there, it's, you know, to hear the laughing is, there's nothing more rewarding than that. Whatever I would maybe want to win or something is is I understand there's no depth with that, and I have the depth right that I want. It's you know yeah you just competitively you can sometimes but I have I have everything you've already found meaning I've already yes yeah and so now I just want to continue to make that kind of stuff and then hopefully do stuff like that where you can do a movie or a TV show or or whatever it is to continue to uh you know make stuff for all these people. That want to come because a lot of people want to laugh and have a good time. You know, yeah, it's fun. I get it. What's your special called, Dustin? Uh, working man. Working Not man. Fifty thousand tickets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 No, that my uh, well, <laughs> not even 50 close. tickets late show. Well, yeah, yeah. you know, my no, manager really likes the idea of working uh, man. Like, let's tell people what the special is. Yeah, in the title. Yeah, let's not. Get, I like. That. Let's not get too cute with it. Let's tell them what the. I like that because I mean, in my head, I'm always you know I want to name it making that fudge right. or you know stuff like that, and I'm like, let's tell them what it is. Counterpoint. Do you think your name already does that? <laughs> Uh, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't though. It, you don't think so? No. Oh, okay. And that, that that's why it was Your the look, t- that, that's why I was the Tennessee kid. No yeah. one knows no one yeah. knew my name. No right. one I mean no one ever knows your name ever. But right. he's joking that I mean, Dusty name Slay. Dusty. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. guy's not a yeah. you know. But that's broker. that's the idea. And I got a lot of jokes about jobs I've worked and a very like, you know, I mean, I had a, you know, I was a pesticide salesman for like 10 years and a waiter. And it's like, so it's all inspired by that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I like it. I think yeah. it, I, I I actually agree. That was a Netflix thing when they said that or they or my manager might have come, but then they came with the tennis again. But it's it's what could what's the title that you go like i i basically know what i'm getting into mm-hmm. and then they and then and then it's just you know then they watch it and they love it and, and working man is like yeah. you're like yeah that wraps up everything and on the netflix half hour I, I came out to the working man's blues by merle haggard but this time my friend jesse daniel my country singer friend wrote the theme song mm. f- that i'll be coming out to oh is that was yeah. in the in the trailer yeah. that's oh that's awesome dude. oh yeah, yeah it was yeah good. 
So he's, he wrote that song and then he's going to do a whole album. So he's going to release that song on his own, but he wrote it for Dude. for the intro to the That's exciting. The album. That's cool. That's so, yeah. exciting. Jesse Daniels, great. If you've not heard him, he's really good country. Yeah. Really good. Couldn't help to notice you're wearing Viore. I am. As am I. We all love Viore. All the items we have are great, like the Sunday performance joggers and the athletic core shorts, which could be the most comfortable aligned athletic shorts. Mm -hmm. All of their pieces are really well made and it did not wear out fast like some other brands. Viore is a new outlook on performance apparel, perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. Mm. You know what I'm talking about, right, Eric? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Viore can be worn for any activity like running, training, yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound yeah. like you want to tell me something. <laughs> no, I just I do all those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The website's very easy to order from. It's not cluttered or busy. Seriously, folks, order something today. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Boom. All right. Um, mm -hmm. All right. We've been looking forward to these comments. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We got over almost 600 just on YouTube. By wow. far the oh. most comments we've ever gotten on an episode. Oh, yeah? Wow. For, for which episode? Mythical Creatures. Mythical really? Creatures. And we yeah. barely even talked about a mythical creature. People were fired say. up. Okay. They liked it. Chrissy Watson. I laughed so hard when the most heated political debate this podcast has ever had <laughs> was heard on the Mythical Creatures episode. I watched a presidential debate where the main question was, how would you fund the hunt for <laughs> Nessie? Y'all are the best. Yeah. A lot of people want you to run for president. All right. We'll give, figure this Nessie stuff out. <laughs> Some, but not I so would, much. I would say Nessie, I understand not doing it now. I'd say just for the town. It's the lure of the town. Right. You shut that town down. Yeah, tourism industry is over. I yeah, think yeah. it's in there, though, and I think they find it, and then tourism booms. Well, then tourism would be, it would be insane. Yes. Yeah. It, it would be the craziest year, but. That risk reward is probably too much <laughs> to be like. I just don't. I don't believe. I mean, that. the whole world's pretty different if there's a Loch Ness monster. Yeah. If there's a dinosaur in this lake, it's. See, you think that, but think about you talk about it in uh, in your last special that think about all aliens. the alien stuff that's come out and we're not living but life. But we still haven't and, seen an alien. Yeah. That's well, the thing. Okay. They still haven't. I mean, it, I'm saying the second you pull a body of something out, if they pull a Bigfoot body or if they do it, everything's different. It has to be undeniable. Yeah. I mean, the UFO stuff is like, they're saying, it's the government saying like, yeah, we've seen some stuff. We can't explain what this thing moving quick is. Uh -huh. But you see so much of it that you're like, hey, what does this even mean? Like, I don't even know. You know, even though it's like fun and they're telling you, you still, there's no. Yeah, I just proof. don't think these world governments really care about the tourism money. You know what I mean? They're like, nah, nah, we, if they want to find it, they'll go, no, nah, we're going to check it out. Yeah. We don't care about your little tourism money. I'm saying for the town. I, that's right. I think maybe. they don't care about the town. That's but a lot of times there'll be a conspiracy video where you see something and then the government will say, no, that's just something else. And you'll say, ah, they're probably covering it up. Yeah. But it seemed like that town would want that to exist, so tourists would come see it. I think, or are we assuming, here's a question, do a lot of people travel to look for the Loch Ness Monster? I just, I mean, you know what's crazy? The yeah. Two days after we uh, recorded this podcast, or the day after, I talked to uh, one of my business managers who was there, the, she was there the day we talked about this. Really? Yeah. Searching for the Loch Ness Monster. Yep. Oh, man. Okay. All right. I mean, some of these African countries that have, like... Whoa. <laughs> 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 I don't know. That's always just fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's this going? You better get yeah. to the point quick. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> they have safari. They have elephants. They have lions. Things yes. like that. They yes. make a lot of money off people coming there to go on these safaris. Uh -huh. So if you have some new creature no, no one's ever seen... Yeah. You make a ton of money. Okay. Mm. Well, yeah, if it's there, well, yeah, you got to make 
But if you find out it's not there. Yeah, I agree with that too. It's trouble. But I just feel like there's got to be something to it, right? Because what's to keep, you know, anybody from just being like, hey, I got some stuff in my leg. Yeah. (laughs) I'll charge you to look around the leg. (laughs) Isn't there one in Canada that's kind of like that? I don't know. I think there's another kind of North American Loch Ness monster mm. oh we should do a mythical creatures episode yeah mm. <laughs> part two <laughs> part two <laughs> yeah. joanna marie zimmerman it's a lot that is a lot joanna marie zimmerman uh uh brian's got a speak us well <laughs> <laughs> sorry joanna i was still looking at your name it's hard to get started it's like a long sprint <laughs> it's a lot to write yeah, you try to sign that on a check. It's gonna, oh, you write a you check gotta, to you write a check to her. You're like, dang, you got yeah. I'm I just you. you, you got to write it in that. Yeah, my hands hurt. You have to write two checks just for one. Tape, yeah. tape them together. Tape them together. Um, Brian's got to start speaking up during these reality based conversations. Watching Aaron go head to head with Nate and Dusty when discussing anything of substance is brutal. Jeez. <laughs> Justice for Aaron. He All needs right. backup. He should have phoned a friend during these debates. Oh, well, right. I, I'm sorry, Aaron, but That's I'm here right. for you today. All it's right. hard sometimes when Nate's on a roll to even jump in there, <laughs> but I'm here for you today. I'm ready to defend you. Right. I appreciate I, it. I agreed with you about we should be doing space exploration. I don't even remember what the argument was about. I didn't agree that the focus should be 4.5 billion years for the sun, but I kind of understand what you're saying now because everybody was like, Aaron, if – the sun explodes, Mars. By everybody, you mean me and Nate. No, <laughs> mm. the comments were oh, all like. I did. I took a uh, lot of heat for people thinking, I said, the sun's going to explode, so we need to go to Mars. And they go, well, don't you know Mars is in the same solar? I'm, like, I'm not saying we stay on Mars, but that's obviously the first step. Obviously. To expanding outside of the solar system. You think we can just see farther then? Like we get to Mars. <laughs> And then oh. we're like, oh, there, these decon plants keep going. <laughs> There's another sun down there. <laughs> There's more of them. He goes, oh, we got to just keep yeah. hopping. Uh-huh. Well, we got to set up That's somewhere right. else. Got to get going. You know? I mean, but it's true. But if the sun does. Yeah. What's the difference of. Well, we got to start somewhere. I'm just saying, if you want to leave the neighborhood, you got to get to the end of your driveway first. That's right. You know? And we're saying, let's not even bother with the driveway. And I'm going, the whole neighborhood. Do we bring everybody to the end of the driveway? I mean. Well, you got to start. Well, you got to start with somebody. I don't know. Yeah. You got to drive the car out there. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be like when they, they would show this video in four billion years. <laughs> and hearing us talk. And it's going to sound like, you know, just like we saw an old video. Just something like, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> but, we been drive. They go. What's a driveway? They go. These. <laughs> they go. They're not even hooked to Neuralink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are they talking? <laughs> yeah. That yeah, takes yeah. so much effort. They needed to talk back then. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And they go. And then you're. And they go. That was the guy that goes. We need to get going. <laughs> 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 Doug Brulet. Brul. Mm, wow. mm. B O man, that's a long one. B R O U I L L E T T E. He's like, let's get all the vowels in here. <laughs> I feel like his family just gave him Doug <laughs> just to give him a b- break, you know, like it's a like, balance. Yeah, like you know, I'm sure it's Douglas, and they're like, but just go by Doug, just so we know we know what's happened. That's a name I don't think anybody wants to spell because mm-hmm. Brulette. If you're a boss of him, you go. I'm all right, Doug B on all your checks. <laughs> of course. And he goes, Yeah, that's that's understandable. Yeah, if you're a teacher, it's Mr. B. It's Mr. Oh. Two yeah. L's and two T's. Oh, yeah. We were Mr. My dad was Mr. B oh, as yeah. a teacher. Smart. Yeah. Love no so to no end. All right. Doug's coming around on me. <laughs> I might have to name the ship after his family's name. The USA does have N O A A National Oceanic Oceanic. Oceanic. I think it's Oce- oceanic. Way, I think. oceanic and atmospheric administrations, but they are pitiful and stuff like the Loch Ness monster and Occupy- o- octopus cities. Great episode. That's true. Yeah, so pitiful and stuff. We didn't even n- know about it. Yeah, but I don't like that they're even throwing in oceanic and atmospheric. Is atmospheric space? Yeah, I don't need you to well, do the both. atmosphere. Yeah, I don't want you to do both. 
Just pick a lane. First of all, who do you think you are? Maybe that's why we're not getting anything done. Yeah. Because you're like, well, we do both. We do the ocean and the air. air. And you're like, well, the, why don't we just focus on one? And then we start a new one. Again, I mean, the whole what's argument the point is- of Na- Then what's NASA it's for? It's just exploring the ocean first and then space. That's the whole debate, I think. If you have and NOAA, just, what's the point of NASA? Different things for different airs. <laughs> NASA, uh, NASA is space. I don't think uh, the NOAA is trying to go to the moon. You know, what I are think? they trying to look at? I don't know. We're supposed to be going back to the moon. You guys see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, it says I have un- trouble with the word back. It says unmanned. <laughs> so I don't believe it. Well, we're no, we're going to send people back soon. The yeah. NOAA warns people for dangerous weather. They chart seas and sky. They guide the use of the protection of ocean and coastal resources, and they conduct research to help understanding and stewardship of the environment. So nothing to really with the They're cel- <laughs> celebrating 200 years. Yeah, it's been NOA's around. been around for 200 years. I don't know. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> 200 years? I agree with you. Yeah. What, yeah. Is, I mean, what is that, 1823? <laughs> And we've we've is that really when it got started? Uh-huh. 1823, they started doing stuff. Fifteen percent of the ocean is that what we've explored? I don't know. <laughs> it was a low number. Yeah, two hundred. There's no way if they walked in and go, "I'm a two hundred year." You get out. 1823. They're like, "Oh, the waves are bad out there." Yeah, it takes a while. Their mission is to understand and predict changes in climate, weather, ocean, and coast. Well, and to share that knowledge and info with others. They're kind of busy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're doing important stuff. Dude. <laughs> I want to show you this. Somebody in uh, at Greenville brought me this. This is Reed Jones brought me this. I don't know if you remember at the end of the, the episode, Lauren, uh, one of the producers here, uh, put a logo together for Noso, and he made the official. Oh, look at that. Wow. Official ID badge. Wow. Yeah. Can... For Noso. What's level, those? F- level four band clearance. What's those codes get you to? This QR codes go to my website. All right. Well, he made that. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. So I'm officially awesome. sanctioned. Just, yeah, you're in. Yep. Uh, yeah. 200 years, huh? Reed Jones. Uh, <laughs> what do they get off? <laughs> what are you? I don't understand what you're. I and mean, what was the Constitution? 1776, right? Yeah. So they're like about a. But so they get. I mean, they got really got going. Then yeah. they So they do. We're the, a country now. Let's. Yeah, start. they do the constitution. <laughs> yeah. Then they're like, let's start figuring out this ocean and atmospheric stuff. That oceanic probably wasn't even a word back then. Yeah, yeah I don't believe that. Two hundred years. <laughs> uh, Sam Sansalone. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Sansalone. Man, that's. He probably goes meets people because I'm Sam, and they go, oh, "What's your last name?" He goes, "Just, just call me Sam." <laughs> no, you got to say it, San Salone. Listening to Nate make a passionate case for how to solve the world's largest problems while wearing a ketchup hat is peak Nate Land, and I am here for it. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. You got your pizza like hat that. on now. This is assistant over there. Yeah. yeah. This is what ketchup ketchup gets to yeah. <laughs> pizza started. <laughs> Somebody gave me this hat in Ohio. They said this. Uh, there was their golf hat. They said they were Team Slice. Oh, that's fun. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. I was wearing a Michigan hat in Ohio, and they Ugh. really took offense to it. Jeez. It wasn't a University of Michigan. It was just a don't you know, even matter. That's a state. Yeah, you, know? Ugh. you just wore a random hat about the state well, of was Michigan. Just <laughs> say pure Michigan. Well, was one it was of those? A, you know, it was a just a you know white trucker hat that has a it's like a, a you know engine bearings. You know, just kind of a old company. Mm-hmm. Do you wear a lot of hats to other when you go to a new state? Yeah, I got a I got a Des Moines, Iowa hat. I'll wear around a lot of places, mm-hmm. even to other places. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I got the Michigan hat and the Des Moines, Iowa hat are my favorites. I mean, they're classic looking hats. Yeah, it's just the Michigan, Ohio State thing, and they and they just play. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know why you hate the whole state. You know. I yeah, do. that's the whole point. Uh, Katie Shea. <laughs> <laughs> This has been the funniest Dusty episode ever. I'm dying. Zucchini Peeny <laughs> is killing me. All right. <laughs> Zucchini Peeny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to read sometimes. And uh, you put zucchini right next to a word like that. Yeah. It's gonna, <laughs> zucchini Peeny. I mean, it rolls <laughs> off the tongue. You know what yeah. I mean? 
Thank you, Katie. <laughs> uh, Kristen Flavel. Flavel. We're getting some people today, boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. F- Flavel. Flav- Flavel. Kristen Flavel. There's an episode of Drain the Oceans where they actually did scan the lake that the Loch Ness Monster supposedly lives in, and they did not find any large creature. I think it's more fun to leave it alone and let people believe in the myth. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I disagree, but... You've never heard of the show, Drain the Oceans. Yeah. I then, mean, it sounds like some kind of propaganda TV show where they're like, oh, no, we scanned it. We can tell what's in there now. Mm-hmm. I was like, I bet you can. <laughs> I bet you scanned it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, we scanned it. We're, we're the Mythbusters of uh, Loch Ness here. It is good though. You could just be like, "Well, he got out." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he they knew got we it locked down. They probably are like, yeah. Because didn't you suggest maybe he went through like a tunnel or something yeah, out in the who ocean? Knows what's going on down there? Yeah. Now let me ask you this: What television show producer would be incentivized for there not to be a Loch Ness monster? Why would they make up the opposite? It's better TV if they find it, right? Well, there's some. I mean, there's shows around chasing Bigfoot where they never find Bigfoot. Yeah. But they'd love to find it. I know. But yeah. you would never argue they actually found Bigfoot and they're just not showing it on the TV show. <laughs> it's not That'd May be the Sweet best Shack. TV show of all time if they found it, right? Bigfoot is, there's a lot, there's just such a defiance with the lake. It's a lake, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't even know why it's, on, yeah. why it's on Discover the Oceans. Or drain the oceans. <laughs> well, they but, do a lot of stuff, like like no so. Yeah, the they lake, do some lakes and rivers. The lake yeah, is but you want to go? Oh, this episode of Drain the Oceans. We're going to go uh, jet skiing in Old Hickory Lake. You're like, well, all right, well, this doesn't make mm-hmm. sense, and that's what happened. So, uh, yeah, I would think you know, a Bigfoot. Like you're like, all right, well, they're not in that where you're looking, but it's like it could be anywhere. And this is like pretty, like it's either there. It's, it's pretty like, contained. Well, yeah. I agree with that. But to Aaron's point, if Loch Ness is there, this TV people would love to find it. Well, sure. I'm Well, I mean, depending on what their overall agenda is. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe their agenda is just to make a TV show and make you watch it regardless of the outcome. Yeah. And so they're just saying, it's that sounds like a good episode. We're going to get to the bottom of Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll watch that. And maybe they find other things in there. Maybe in the episode, they're like, oh, there actually is some cool stuff in here. Mm. I guess if it's just one episode on the Loch Ness, they don't care. Right. We tried it. At the end of the show, they're like, we didn't find him. Next week, we're talking about algae. I mean, I've watched <laughs> lots of useless shows where at the end, they don't find what the, and that, of course, you know, maybe they would love to find it, but they're like, well, we already filmed the show. Yeah, so you used to have a joke it about it. it. Yeah. Yeah. The Bigfoot joke. Yeah. If they, yeah. Can you imagine? That's why you watch it. Can you imagine if they find mm-hmm. The world's different. You ever watch the show River Monsters? That guy who catches a like myth, basically mythological fish all over the world and mm. catches them. Yeah, and he just stopped doing the show. Why? Because he, I've caught everything. Oh, really? That's what he said. He's like, I've gotten everything I've ever wanted to catch. Wow. There's not this. Is, I've right. done everything. And yeah. the only thing that makes this mythological is that we haven't caught it. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be, <laughs> you know? yeah, I, I guess, guess it could have died, right? Yeah. It was a long time ago. And it's like, there, there you know, I watched just a, a, a show just on, uh, you know, the ocean. And like, there was like these, uh, the orcas will kill a baby blue whale, a giant baby blue whale, just to eat the bottom jaw of the whale. And then this giant whale sinks to the bottom of the ocean where other things eat the rest of it. Mm. So if Loch Ness dies, I'm sure there's something down there to eat it. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it might've been a hundred years ago. Yeah. Which we would have already been to a hundred years of the D, whatever that was. The, yeah. Noah. The Noah. Noah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Charles Soden. Mm. The problem with Nate's rant is that many of our current day inventions came from thinking about the future. I'm sure people thought NASA was wasting their time creating <laughs> things like the laptop, computer, camera phone, wireless headphones, or insulation. They were invented for space, but became widely useful everyday items. Mm-hmm. Velcro. That's another big one. Came from NASA. Oh, yeah? hmm Would you like to issue an apology? <laughs> no, I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> uh <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. I I, I but don't know. Thinking about the future, I know. But I would also debate all of these things that NASA invented <laughs> them for this or that, whatever insulation. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> come on. You telling me nobody yeah. was sitting around going, "I wish there was something to keep it from true. getting so cold in here while we're inside the house." Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, I would debate that NASA invented that for space, and it's like, oh, you know what? What else we can use this for? Our trailers. Yeah. So NASA invented everything? Yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm sure Apple would probably disagree a little bit, too. All right. Here's a quick list of things that came from space. Camera phones, scratch-resistant lenses. I mean, you wear glasses. Right. This is what they claim, but they <laughs> yeah. probably sold this, stole this idea from some poor smuck out there. He goes, hey, I invented scratchless lenses. And then they shot him, and then they were like, <laughs> we got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Foil blankets. Well, there you go. Yeah. You use the Next marathon you run, yeah. mm -hmm. think NASA. A yeah, foil blanket, I'll give them that. I'll a, give them foil blanket. A dust buster? I yeah, mean, that's nice. Yeah, but probably use aluminum foil and just slept under it. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, you're like, I'm cold and all I got is this roll of aluminum foil. <laughs> Wireless headsets, memory foam, freeze-dried food, smoke detectors, baby formula, artificial limbs. I mean, this list is crazy. A computer mouse. Yeah, see, right. I, I debate all that with them. <laughs> like they're like now nah, they're with, like we invented this and i'm like yeah i bet you did nasa developed an eight ounce uh ear thermometer which used infrared astronomy technology to measure the amount of energy emitted by the eardrum if you're making this stuff though what i mean so what are they doing they're making all this stuff for space and they're like you know what this would go great in target as well <laughs> <laughs> they go well we've got to have a human being survive in space, which means we're going to have to do all kinds of things. I understand that. Yeah. I would say. So then they get all the resources. They get the funding to do research and develop yeah. this stuff. And then they're like, and then no that, space. they can pivot <laughs> that. Yeah. So they get the Don't money. Now. <laughs> so and the money comes from taxes, probably. From yeah. NASA. Yeah, it's a government. Okay. It's a so government. the thing that's inventing all this stuff has unlimited of our money. Right. And then they go, oh, and then on top of it, we're the ones that we're the only ones that get to invent this stuff because you you can't even try to invent it. And then they resell it to us, mm -hmm. and we pay taxes on the resale. And so, I man, I guess we'll our money invented. That's it. the system. Yeah. Huh. That's a bleak way of looking at it, but yeah, I guess That's so. The reality, That's, reality yeah. is bleak. <laughs> 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 memory foam here's a good example 1970 y'all made that get 1970s nasa who do you think you are noaa <laughs> get out 70. 1970 y'all made memory foam that's what i'm saying yeah oh yeah i don't need to may help make everyone's seats more comfortable i mean it's so like what they get the process of owning a bet i so, guess they get it started and then these companies like Apple or whatever, maybe buy the technology and then they patent it and make it go out to consumers. I don't know how that works. I'm not giving NASA yeah. all this credit. Yeah, I think I'm back to, <laughs> I think I'd stand with whatever I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jake Larson. Aaron talks a big game oh, with a lot of things, but Brian is closer to David Beckham than Dusty is to Michael Phelps. What? Might be the most outlandish thing he's ever said on this podcast. Yeah, okay. Dusty, oh, okay. I'm with okay. you. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm reading it in a different <laughs> speed. Uh, Dusty, I'm with you on this. I'm baffled that everyone thinks breakfast could blend in on a soccer field better than you in a swimming pool. Having played soccer my whole life, I can assure you that Brian would stick out like a sore thumb, sore thumb no matter what he does. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You know why about, I'm saying Jake. that? Because you look like a you look like a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm that's talking a, about, that's Jake. The joke inside of the joke. I mean, it's like now, my argument is not that I am Michael Phelps, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying you're blending in. Yeah, I can. You know, I, I have as much chance to blend in. Yeah, he's as just Brian saying. Well, yeah, I was going to say that for the next comment, but we'll go ahead and look at this if you want. Um, the next comment. Mike Hunt says, Brian is severely underestimating how much soccer players have to run even when they're not near the ball. Here's Messi this weekend. It's a time-lapse video following Messi yeah, he's not around even going the that field. Fast. And he's just walking back and forth. But to do, you do would that. be running to get keep that pace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can you know, walk. Yeah. Uh, he's jogging a little bit. Yeah, but I can I mean, jog a little bit this too. This is the thing that, that makes – 
you watching Messi walk not seem weird is that when he does spring into action, mm -hmm. it's pretty incredible. Well, he's just trying mm -hmm. not to ever spring into action. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, the thing is, is <laughs> that, that that's a lot of walking for you, man. Because you got to walk. <laughs> you can't ever really be left out of the play the competition uh -huh. if you're trying to blend in you kind of need to be in the thick of it so people don't notice you so yeah. i mean if you get tired i mean you can't even be walking that far back because you and the, the, you know you need to kind of be so you're going to have to do a little running and i mean you're going to be <laughs> you're going to be exhausted well i don't deny that and, and, they, <laughs> and they play for 45 straight minutes and then you're going to complain about, but the clock stopped. Why is it still going? <laughs> I do that from the stand, so I'm sure yeah. I'd be doing that on the field. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. have emailed me trying to explain the whole thing. They're like, it's not about whether you're good at the sport or not. It's whether you can blend in. But my argument is that you have to play the sport in order to blend in. We're not just talking about the sidelines, right? I mean, it's like. It's the, I know. That's why you picked the worst one possible. Swimming stuff because your body. My my, I don't know why we think my body's so bad, but uh, it's not a swimmer's I mean, body. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's go watch any swimming. I mean, you're you but know. you're talking about Olympics, right? I I I argue that there is a professional swimming league out yeah. there that we have no idea. Okay, about. we mm -hmm. could find that. Yeah, and we 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 could find that where you could just go. I mean, but you're going to stand there with speedos and no shirt. On. <laughs> what, are they all wearing speedos? I don't know. I don't but, think uh, they have. <laughs> Tommy Bahamas on. I mean, you uh, cut off jeans. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, but uh, yeah, I'll do it. I mean, let's go. You'd at least, you could wear those long ones that go during your knees. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could maybe wear a full body suit. A bit more of a swimming suit. You'd probably mm -hmm. wear, yeah, you'd probably be, you'd want the most coverage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd trim the beard back. I'd wear a swimming cap. I mean, you'd be like, all right. Yeah. This guy's ready to go. Yeah. Because you see a lot of swimmers with beards. <laughs> Well, you know, you got to really trim it back. It has yeah. to really be close. You willing to go back to old Dusty? Well, I don't want, I mean, I'm not going to shave it off. But, yeah. But yeah, I mean. You take it down. But who knows what's, what, you know, we're seeing the guys make yeah. it to the Olympics. We want to see like the local swim. Yeah, there might be a professional league, uh, almost like a minor league swim team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they're never making it to the Olympics. Yeah, didn't someone say bowling too? Bowling would be good. But I'm but terrible at bowling, so I, could I would, do it. I could I would do bowling. immediately not. Yeah, you're pretty good. I mean, you're a good bowler, but again, I don't think it needs to be an individual sport. Blending in means get out there and try to stay away from the action. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. But nothing says I'm not good at this like staying away from the action. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're trying to make people think you're good. You're I to think blend in and not be seen. But I think that when the gunshots fired and you jump into the pool, everyone will go, that guy's not supposed to be here. Yeah, but we mm. even said in the yeah, original the that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we would have time to train. We said we would give some time to train. You just so. said I could hop off this table right now yeah. and <laughs> beat Danielle in a race, but not blend in. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, okay. You know what I mean? So okay. I would the first thing I would do if I were to start training was learn the form of jumping off that thing. Right, right, right. Because that's where I, I don't have. But mm -hmm. swimming in the pool, okay. speed wise, I'm ready. Freestyle. But I don't jump off a lot of the, you know, a lot of the. I think you, I don't know if you would get training because you would you would be, I mean you know I think you get a couple of days notice training if it's a real mission I don't think they're like hey in six years Not you don't that jump much off time. a board do you you jump off something some you jump platform off the, yeah. of some sort. edge of the pool I thought I think it's a platform I think of some it's sort. yeah I think it's a platform oh, okay man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because those your swim those your swim meets back in the day but above ground pool circular. I'm just trying <laughs> to remember the Olympics were all, right, all lined up. I mean, this will have you to can come. push off the ladder, <laughs> do 40 laps, first one win. <laughs> it's just the small. Above. This will have to come down the to a competition. The, uh, mm -hmm. the Watson family is the one that's judging it. <laughs> it will never be settled. Who's the today. Watson family? Remember the Watson pools? Oh yeah, the Watson girl. <laughs> yeah. Somebody suggested slot receiver for me. Oh, okay. Because they said you just got to go 10 yards and they'd have to cover you. Mm -hmm. Just don't throw it to him. And <laughs> I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> I started I mean, thinking about it. I would want to just see you in these uniforms. See you, <laughs> seeing you in full pads would be pretty yeah. great. Yeah. See, team sport, I think, to me, is the hardest to blend in with because you're in, you know, you're up next to all your other teammates. Yeah. Football might not be. I would never fumble, though. 
because whenever they try to determine if that was a catch or not, they always like, he didn't make a football move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could run 30 yards downfield with the ball. They're like, he never made a football move. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was completion. Yeah. Somehow think, he never had possession of it. Do you yeah. think an offensive line could hold a defensive line long enough for you to get to 30 yards? How many yards? <laughs> how many, like, like how many yards? Uh, do you think even this might be a fun question? Like uh, I'm doing Manning cast to if yeah. if you all right. Oh, yeah. that's on there. That's right. But it's like it was maybe a fun question to bring up. How good of an offensive line could some like if it would be like to get me to get to or to get you to uh, thirty yards away? We know how the Eagles have the tush push. Yeah, I mean that'd be <laughs> they'd have to really do some pushing. Football's yeah. terrifying. I mean, I would be. It would be so. Uh, the quarterback's got to be – it's going to be like you're going to make it – you're running a 30-yard out. So that means you run 30 yards and then cut out. Yeah. So right when you turn, I'm saying could you – like the – could the old line be like, boys, I need you to hold. Because he's slow. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he's going to get caught up at the line. The yeah. D-back is going to – he – I don't know if you even get past the end. No. Yeah. But even if there was no one guarding you, just <laughs> – just a straight. No one covered me. No one covering you. Yeah. Straight thirty yard out, and then he goes. Hut. Could any offensive line hold <laughs> long enough for the quarterback not to get crunched? Yeah. yeah, for him to be like, I can't. Yeah, you got to get there sooner. It had to be prevent D for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know? The rush one, maybe. <laughs> I would like to see this. We could probably get a football team to be like, y'all just, you know, they're doing their practice. Yeah. Let Brian full pads and everything. <laughs> He's got to run a 30 yard out. And then you, and you can see, like, what would be the out, the average time? Cause it's like they get like three or four seconds. I think you could do it. How far do you think you can get 30 yards? Do How far can you, I think I get 30 I mean, yards? Yeah, yeah. I'd say about 30 yards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> How much time? I mean, it would take me. It take me a little bit. <laughs> what I'd like to see is the goal goal line, first and goal with one, mm-hmm. and I I formation where I jump over the line to score oh the touchdown God, with Bo Jackson. <laughs> I don't think you could get over your own line. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know I couldn't. I think you would go. Your best guess is to go, go low. Under, go you, underneath their legs. You yeah. butt fumble it, dude. <laughs> I mean, can yeah. you imagine getting hit? I mean, yeah. at least if you're in the NFL, you've been getting hit like that since high school. Yeah, you're yeah. already a little yeah. brain dead. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. gosh. Yeah. Li- I, I remember I played football in middle school one year. And we did hitting drills, and oh, that's yeah. when I was like, I'm out. Oklahoma? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's me too. It was like, yeah. You want to tell us about Rocket Money? Oh, I've been waiting all day to talk about it. I love Rocket Money. If I asked you, Brian, how many subscriptions you have, would you, you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying? No, because if you would have asked me this question before I started using Rocket Money, I would have said yes. But let me tell you, I would have been so wrong. I cannot believe how many I had and all the money I was wasting. I've talked about it all the time. I sign up for stuff. You know, I get ambitious Mm -hmm. and I think I'm going to change my life and I Mm -hmm. sign up for something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. You need Rocket Money as much as I do. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. God, is there anything worse than having to call a customer service hotline and wait to talk to a human being? You don't have to anymore. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions now by going to rocketmoney.com slash Nate. That's rocketmoney.com slash Nate. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash Nate. Boom. Uh, Mike Hun. Well, that's the one I just kind of read. But you can. Oh, uh, Brian probably, is yeah. severely <laughs> underestimating how much soccer players have to run, even when they're not near the ball. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Manning. I've listened to all 176 episodes, some multiple times. Mm. Nate telling Aaron he could do a cannonball to start us off might be the line <laughs> that has made me laugh the hardest. 
A visual of Dusty and Nate on a starter block and Bates holding his stopwatch on the side of pool <laughs> with Aaron doing a cannonball is absolutely gold. Episode was hot. Um, I, I agree. Know. It was a hot episode. Yeah. It was good. We're going to do a little bit more. We'll do a little bit more. With this episode, uh, what, is, uh, what is this episode? Mythical Creatures Part 2. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, maybe we really talk about some mythical creatures, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> <laughs> well we did grand scheme of things we barely scratched the surface and we spent most of our time talking about the Loch Ness Monster and, and Bigfoot so. and space and yeah and space <laughs> but I, I'm guessing there's a bunch that we didn't get to there's a few there, now there's a whole pseudoscience called cryptozoology mm-hmm. a cryptid you're gonna hate me for this I mm-hmm. took a cryptozoology class in college <laughs> I don't even know what pseudo means <laughs> means it's a science that nobody counts <laughs> A lot oh, of really? There's I mean, that's not that what pseudo means, but basically it's not like a official science. There's a lot yeah. of that out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of it for Dusty. Yeah, there's a lot of it's that. It's all pseudo It's called NASA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of what? That you took there. a crypto? I took an anthropology, cl- anthropology class in college that was about cryptozoologies. We talked all about this stuff. How would you even know to take that class? You had to take <laughs> So I don't flyer. know. I think you tore, I, tore one of those little things off, like yeah. fake guitar lessons. Uh huh. I did had you, did you when you honestly when you pick classes. Yeah. Did they just you have to go? Hey, what does this mean? And they're like, oh, we'll go talk about like bugs and stuff. And you're like, all right, I'll do that. Well, That's there's usually a course description of what you're going to talk about. And most you were of looking the, for a, some easy credits. Well, you have to fulfill certain requirements, right? Like you have to do at Notre Dame, you had to do like a theology requirement, or you have to do like an uh, arts and letters, a science, or something yeah. like that. And I can't remember what it was. I think this class counted as a science class yeah. or something, even though it was about pseudoscience. Mm-hmm. But it was just all about how to recognize falsified evidence and stuff like that. Yeah, for for these types of things. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Important well, anyway, stuff. These mythical creatures—they're called cryptids. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole science out there. <laughs> Don't know what that means, but anyway. There's a cryptozoology and paranormal museum in Littleton, North Carolina. So, oh, why is a, it there? It's a big thing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I was trying to think which one to start with. Now, Dusty, you sent me a video. Uh, you probably don't remember because it was a couple weeks ago, but it's just normal video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. your yeah. daily video that yeah. you send. Take a look at this. But it was the one in Indonesia. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, those, that one's fun. Um, yeah, let me find it real quick. All right. Well, what yeah, we're talking the about the humanoid in Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, so these people are out on a paddleboard, I guess, or whatever, and and then they see these things out there, and they're kind of like a some type of monkey with crazy legs, and we don't have audio, but they're they're basically playing music, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I you know, and I don't know, but it's a pretty fun video. Can I turn audio on in here? Is that okay? Just to hear it? I want to hear it for a second. Is it in the video, Brian? Yeah, it's in yeah. the video. <laughs> <laughs> that they're performing some sort of ritual with music and water. These animals seem to look at this original. I just want to hear it. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of creepy. Well, if this comes back copyrighted, we know it's fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This video is great, though. I mean, you know, whether you believe it or not, I'm not saying I do, but you, it, it's a fun video. I mean. Now, I, I didn't watch the whole video you sent me, but the explanations given is it was some type of performance art piece, and those were people in oh. costume. Well, this uh, was right. the, 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 you know, the mainstream kind of like, oh, they were like, this is what it is. But they kind of break it down in that, you know, these, these. They don't look the same. They're very similar, but they don't look the same. Mm. I just tend to, I just like the idea of believing that there's a little more out there in the, in the world than what we're like, see every day. I mm-hmm. just think it's fun to sure. uh, not just live as though everything is so boring and like the, like the swamp monster guy or whatever you're talking about. He's like, I've caught everything. It's like, it's just boring to believe that we've seen everything. We found everything. I like to believe there's a little mystery still out there, you know? Mm-hmm. I like how they're already being critical of, you know, you're seeing possibly alien type things. Yeah. 
And they're like, oh, and they're making music. And this was like, well, that one guy's not that good at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what the bottom says. <laughs> 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 they go, you're seeing an alien. They're playing music all pretty good. We don't even know what these people are. Yeah. The cla- caption is, if this is a performance, the guy sitting down isn't playing the part very yeah. well. I think <laughs> they're talking about one of the guys in the boat that sees it. What? Wow. There's, oh. There's, when they're in their little canoes, there's a guy who is like kind of freaking out. So they're saying, if this is a performance where everybody's in on it, that guy is not playing his part well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would I would not believe in it. I mean, I would imagine, yeah, how do you act like you're, you look like you're on a... Uh, uh, like Prince Harry. Yeah, yeah, it looks like you're on a something like a, that they go to all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, now... Well, I agree. And if they found like it, and two, like, what if if you saw something like this? How would the government not like fly in and be like, "All right, we're going down to find it." Out. Like, well, that's what you're arguing. They probably is going on, right? And maybe they did. Yeah, maybe this video came out. They go down there, they capture all those things, and they go, "Oh, that's just a performance art piece." Make us some costumes. It looks like yeah. And then that that, now out. these little beings are in some laboratory, and they're cutting mm. them open, going, "What is this?" Mm-hmm. So they can release it in forty years and go. They are real, and then we'll all go. Yeah. Oh, we don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Mexico can deliver it out and go. We got the bodies right here, and we're like, nah, yeah. nah. Mm. And I don't know. I'm not saying they're real. I don't. You right. Know, I just like yeah, the fun, idea right. that this. Is yeah, real. yeah. It would be fun. There's a uh, Native American tribe that talked about these group of giants that all had red hair. And they said they legend was they would fight fight these giants. This was in Nevada, and of course people just thought it was myth and legend. And I mean a lot of people still do. But then in like 1911, they found uh, giant skulls and remains in a cave in Lovelock, Nevada, right where this tribe lived. And they found red hair, and they found a bunch of other like giant footprints and things like that. So uh, there's a lot of evidence that maybe. There was something to these legends. Yeah, there's a lot of Native American uh, paintings and stuff with these six finger, six toed giants uh, that was living here back mm. back in that time. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> red haired cannibalistic <laughs> giants. Yeah, mummified remains of a man six feet six inches tall were discovered. All right, well that's yeah. not that impressive. You know my thing about the then we talk about the basketball players being like in fi- fifty years yeah. they're all seven feet. Yeah. yeah, I mean I'm seeing videos all the time now, uh, and maybe because I look that it's like a twelve year old that's six yeah, ten. Like, yeah, this you know. Yeah, you're like what? And they're all dribbling, they're all shooting, uh-huh. they're all playing like they're five eight. Yes. I mean they're you know it's like eventually fifty years like that. I mean there might be. So in 1911, you find a six foot six. It's just crazy. Mummified, you're like, oh my god, guy is a giant. Dude. Yeah, six foot six. You've never mm-hmm. seen a human being that tall in 1911. Yeah, I didn't read this. That's Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. I watched a History Channel video, which is weird to me. The History Channel is even getting into the cryptid stuff, but this oh, was narrated not... by William Shatner. Oh, really? Yeah, right. and they were like it was nine feet tall and all this stuff, but. Dusty, I figured you'd be more on board with the Native Americans. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think that their accounts mean something, and if they said that they saw it, then we should, you know, uh, you know, put some, uh, you know, give them some credit. Mm. But instead, we're like, ah, I don't know. We found six foot six mummy. Nah, that's not that tall. You know what <laughs> By I mean? The way, this was uh, <laughs> discovered in 1911. Mm-hmm. Uh, NOAA. Almost 90-something years. <laughs> yeah, they've been around already. a while. <laughs> 1911, Nino You cannot get past that. <laughs> they've already been, they're 90 years in. They've been scanning the ocean for almost been 100 the years. Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> before the light bulb was and, invented. Yeah, before yeah. The, yeah, they've been just going around. Yeah, we've been doing 200 years. Why is it such a big deal that they were red-haired? They seem to point that out a bunch. And why is that scarier? Well, if they all than, had red hair. Why is that scarier than if they all had brown hair? That's well, a I good think question. that. Well, I yeah. think. What color is your hair red? Brown. Oh, yeah. I, I think a lot red. of no. <laughs> Native Americans had black hair, 
right? So it's like if you're It'd living very here, different. yeah, and then there's a giant race and they all have red hair. But don't you agree that if you're given two scenarios where a giant's running at you, it's a little more creepy if the, it has red hair? Yeah. Yeah. If they I all have know. red I mean, hair. They, yeah, I mean, if it's a big giant. I mean, they, they talk yeah. about having six fingers, six toes. Some say two rows of teeth. I mean, all pretty <laughs> scary. Double decker. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was also- and red hair, um, which might be the scariest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there was also the Kandahar giant. Y'all heard of that? No. When troops were in Afghanistan, the story is a troop, a whole group turned up missing. They sent another special forces group to look for him in these caves in Afghanistan, and a giant came out. And he had red hair, and he attacked this troop, and they finally shot him and killed him. And uh, and what after what happened to him after that, nobody knows. But legend is that you know this troops in Afghanistan found this giant in a cave. Yeah, see, I don't so see why all this stuff is so crazy, right? Like we believe in a Tyrannosaurus Rex, we believe in a flying pterodactyl, we believe in all these things. It's like mm-hmm. okay, so you have a big human. Because they're supposed to be gone, I think. Well, and because we have fossils of those things, mm-hmm. yeah. but we have nothing. Of well, yeah, but you do actually. You have a full body, which is well that we've seen. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's supposed to not. That's not supposed to be here, and that's the that's the problem. And so, yeah, <laughs> Maybe that's they why say we're it was redheaded so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had two. I don't know how that yeah. doesn't. I don't know how in a war. Two countries can't come together and go, let's maybe hold off on each other and let's go find these giant yeah. red-haired men in these caves. Yeah. Time out. Yeah. Hold on, guys, guys, guys. I would guys. think even, yeah, mm-hmm. the Taliban would be like, all right, we're open to that. Yeah. yeah. Right, but it's like, think about this. Like, it, it, the common belief seems to be that we're getting larger, right? We, we were a smaller people before, yeah. and now we're getting larger. So yeah. evidence of larger beings like that would 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 undermine that. Mm-hmm. So it would change the, the whole view of things. Well, I think somebody that big, it would it's much bigger than us even now. It's not like it's big relative to somebody from a thousand years ago they're like they're giants yeah yeah yeah. like the nephilim yeah yeah i mean i mean and that's all stuff that's talked about i mean historical things maybe we had to be but, that big but we don't because you know just uh, depends on transforce rex where you know we they're big so <laughs> yeah. they, they needed to be the size of like a Think of a little turtle now. We're not <laughs> right. scared of a turtle. Uh-huh. So for us not to be scared of Tyrannosaurus Rex, we need to be as big as that. That's true. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And again, I don't know, but it is it is interesting that they do have all these accounts. Different places, different people are like, "Yeah, we saw this thing," but everybody's like, "Nah, that's just, just a myth." Like the idea. I don't know. The, you know, when they it's like you you evolve. Mm. Over time to get used to something. Mm-hmm. And I always like, you ever think you're like, well, I can't do that. And you think, uh, I won't worry about it because in a million years we'll be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, we'll be on our way to Mars and, uh, you know what I mean? Looking to jump to the next planet. It's, but isn't it like what's like an animal <laughs> has to evolve to, uh, eventually, like it's like, I don't know, like there, say we're all underwater mm-hmm. and then some got to go out of water. Yeah. So, well, they have to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, which is the accepted belief, by the way, that we evolved, we have, human beings evolved from a water, water, that's where we yeah. started, came out of the water onto yeah. land. Yeah. So, the, <laughs> I know, yeah. so I'm saying, yeah. it's just, I, and I'm not trying to say anything. I right, just think right. it's, it's just funny to me to be like, the first one came out and died immediately, and they're like, <laughs> this is not good. And then they kept coming, and then I guess they make it a little bit farther. Yeah. And then the, and then the females and the males were evolving at the same time yeah. so that they could reproduce. Otherwise, yeah. it would it would they would not be able to like have babies. that's how it, that's how it works, right? Or maybe a creature had a genetic mutation that allowed it to stay out of water for a few more seconds than the average creature, right? Mm. That allowed it to hop out of the water and eat more than the other creatures. Natural selection says, but it would have to be two at the same time, though, right? Nope. It'd have to be a. So, sorry, yes, no, yeah, that's okay. I did not mean to that cut you off direct, that yeah. aggressively. Yeah, no, wow, yeah. no, nope. that's what I'm saying. I'm start calling you NASA. It, yeah, nope. I know. Natural selection says that's the creature that's going to breed more 
than the one that can eat more. I mean, it's, it's, you're competing for resource. It's going to breed more. Right. Mm. And then pass that genetic mutation down to its offspring. And then that one breeds more. And but then do they pass really that have to, positive genetic mutations? Oh, all the time. You don't think there's any like anomalies of people that can uh, jump farther than other people or people that are smarter than other people. We all have genetic but differences. But what makes being able to jump farther than somebody a mutation? I because mean, you it's just a, not, you know, I mean, like you just. You have like a little extra. When I say a genetic heel. mutation, I mean a, a <laughs> genetic difference. That's That's just a product of random chance. You know, it's a lot of, I mean, yeah, I mean, but the, yeah, yeah, there would be like a lot of random chances now, you to know, get us from like the, the water to the land to, to be in a, a who well, we yeah. are today. We're talking millions of years of chances. That's what it's mm. so millions of years of this. So it's going to play out over time. Now, you know, people whose arms are longer than other people's, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, lots yeah. of people Not are just many. different sizes. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. If your arms, if your arms are long. I know four. <laughs> But like a person who has long arms, yeah, and and they have a baby with someone, like their 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 kid's arms not necessarily just longer than that, and then they keep, and then the next thing you know, people are dragging with their arms on the ground. <laughs> but I'm saying, if all the food in the world's hanging from a tree, and only the people with long arms can reach it, those are the people that are going to breed and pass down long armedness well, to yeah, the next generation. Well, I mean, that generation. sort of evolution. Uh, yeah, makes sense, but the the well, that's all. That's all it is. It's just that with a ton of different variables over a long period of time. Yeah, that's but to get is. from a you know from from nothing essentially because there would single celled organism. But there would be. But either way, I mean, it, there had to be nothing before the single celled organism. There, because at some point there had to be nothing, right? Unless God created everything. Uh, they would have, unless there was an ultimate creator, whatever you'd like to call it, mm -hmm. then there would have to be nothing at some point. Because the idea is that Maybe. God exists outside of time. Space so, time. Yeah. So time means nothing to God. So there would have to be a creator or otherwise there uh, would have to be nothing. Mm -hmm. And then something comes from nothing. Which some people argue. I think Stephen Hawking said that, that he thinks the Big Bang, before the Big Bang, there was just nothing. And then it happened. Man, but you were but making, right. Right, is I mean, is that that makes sense? I mean, unless like, something created it that exists outside of time, sure. Then there would have to be nothing before something. I sure. think if anybody ever was like, "What do they talk about Notre Dame? What do they talk about <laughs> Panama City Community College?" <laughs> <laughs> this is these are the conversations uh, that Notre Dame's doing this, yeah. right? But I mean, is I mean, but but what would be the other scenario? I don't know. I'm just saying I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That it's like it, it's. Uh, they really should throw us some regular folk into – we should be able to get into the real colleges just so we can be like – Observe. Go, just going yeah. like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold you up, need a hold couple – Yeah, variable. that idea of – yeah, variable. Like show that – like the, the racing, Olympic racing. Show a regular person to show how fast they are. And look, sometimes my initial reaction is to scoff at what I think is a dumb question. And then I go, well, I don't really know – how to mm -hmm. answer that. That happens a lot. Right, because yeah, some people uh, that. Uh, say that, well, God set evolution into motion. But sure. it's like, or... That's what all Christians believe for almost 2,000 or, years. But or, yeah. Well, I don't know if all of them. I don't yeah. know if you can account for all of them. But you would also... That's a wild statement, Aaron. Aaron just said all of them, everybody. <laughs> and he, and yeah, everybody I mean, knows I he meant... All yeah, air. I don't think well, you could know. Look, that. evolution didn't wasn't a theory until the 1800s, but anyway. But it's like you know, you you could Again, just believe that national ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. When they, <laughs> already vented. That's when they got yeah. started. Yeah, but uh, yeah. you know, God could you know have potentially just created everything with a purpose, with no need to you know. And I believe in the whole idea that uh, Galapagos Islands thing, where the the mm -hmm. beaks, some beaks are stronger to crack the nuts right, and right. so you end up with the stronger beaked birds and the weak beaked birds die right but th i just think that's a leap to me to get from you know a fish to a to a man and it's, i realize a lot of millions leaps. of yield, yeah, years of but yeah. it would be a lot of different chances for sure to ha to get to that place well, i don't think anybody's denying that yeah, yeah. do you think that if a fish you're say your fish 
that's now turned into you. <laughs> if be a great swimmer. If he could, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why you're so confident in your yeah, swimming. Yeah. yeah. Do you think he would be disappointed where he's at, or you think he's, you know, he's like, this is a million years. This is all we got. Well, that's another thing too. Oh, he's when, like, I'm on Netflix. When yeah, did the, yeah. when did the uh, evolved being uh, get consciousness? You know, did that fish always have it? Uh, I think he knew he was going to get Netflix one day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had a dream. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at what point are we go, we're going along? And there, we're there like, was a, now I'm aware yeah. that I'm a being. There was a know. dusty you know? slave. There was a dusty slave fish. Mm -hmm. Do that, you think that dogs have consciousness? No. Uh, I don't know if they have a rational mind. So why would some things get it and other things not get it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's the the big like. That's yeah. the big question. But you were making a point at the start of this. I think might actually be interesting mm. uh, that we shouldn't <laughs> worry about a million years from now because what we're we trying to say that we'll evolve to the point where it'll just take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's all going to just like Work you shouldn't worry out. about anything. We if evolved you can't, to live without the sun. Yeah, if there was ever something that yeah, you would just figure mm. a way out. Yeah, we don't eat stuff anymore. We don't eat. Yeah, plants. if you have a cold time, you would just well figure a way out. Is what he's yeah. saying. You start going to other planets and you live. No, somewhere else. I'm saying you figure it out as your as the person. The, Why leave the Earth? We just adapt to it over yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, we could be that. That's what the dinosaurs. We said. could be the. Uh, the but human that could live for a couple of extra seconds without oxygen. Well, the, some of the dinosaurs did adapt. If it's alligators and tortoises and Lock whatever birds, birds, yeah, birds, like mm -hmm. so they would have adapted. They just, you know, they changed it up. So it's like they just were mm -hmm. like, "Hey, let's not be so big." Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. That's what they all agreed on. They voted on it. They go, "Y'all want to start not being as big?" They go, "Yeah, that'd be." And yeah, here we are. That's true. I'm behind on my ad. So, Aaron, you want to tell us about Delete Me? Oh, I've been waiting the whole episode to talk about Delete Me. Folks, we are so excited to tell you about our new sponsor, Delete Me. Nate and Laura have been using it for a long time. Yeah. And I signed up. Onboarding was easy. And they send out monthly reports. And I was surprised what they started removing from me. I just checked out my report. I mean, like 70 different websites. My address was on, oh, my name, wow. my email, my wow. phone number. They've removed all of it. Tender mm. for me. <laughs> Your website? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these are like these personal search engines that people use, like background searches, stuff mm -hmm. like that, like the yellow pages, all your stuff's out there. And they go in there and they find it and they delete it for you. As a person who exists publicly, we are hyper aware of safety and security. It's easier than ever to find personal information about people online. All this data hanging out on the internet can have actual consequences in the real world. It's not just a one-time service. It's not like this is they go in and they do it. This is they're always working for you. They constantly monitor and crawl through the internet and remove that personal information that you don't want. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Now, at a special discount for our listeners. Today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash Nate and use promo code Nate at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to joindeleteme.com slash Nate and enter code Nate at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash Nate. Code Nate. Bam. How about it? You got two ads. I got none. They must have known we were going to be talking about evolution. Today. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't, don't give that guy no ads. You do have one, Dusty. Do I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's not here. All right. Well, you're supposed to, according to my list. Oh, I think they said they were bringing it up in a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's only been an hour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hour and a half. <laughs> uh, Chupacabra. You guys all heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hear that. What is that? Isn't that what That's, you talked um, about one time? As a But you had it. But you said it wrong? Uh, probably. I say a lot of things wrong. It's a Latinx. Uh, <laughs> it's a what? Latinx Bigfoot. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. <laughs> oh, look at this guy. <clears throat> Don't call this Mary. is like yeah. uh, part fish, part Isn't man. Isn't it Mexico? Right yeah, I think Mexico is where it's prominent. Yeah. This did not, I would have thought this has been around for maybe hundreds of years, the legend. And maybe it has in some ways, but 1995. Whoa. That's what <clears throat> probably NOA was invented then. Yeah. Noah, Noah, <laughs> Noah. And they don't want to say that, yeah. but you're going to go flip. They should be flipped. Right. Chupacabra oh, should be from 1823. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chupacabra literally means goat sucker. 
in Spanish. Yeah, so people turn up with their pretty much that. They're at livestock killed goats and something had there was holes where something had bit them and sucked blood out of them. And now I read where the f- woman who first claimed this chupacabra was in Puerto Rico and she just watched the movie Species, which has an animal that looks exactly like that. Oh, okay. And she was a little delusional and thought that that was like a real thing, the movie. So, so, but it caught on. It caught on. Now, you might say the government was trying to make her look crazy. Well, and, if she was just watching the movie and then she described the thing that was in the movie. But maybe that's what the government's saying she did to try to discredit her. And maybe the thing in Species was based off this. Yeah. <laughs> it evolved. Maybe there really is no imagination. It's just people seeing things. Now, there was a video. A movie about this. Do you have the video of the Chupacabra from last week? Yeah, oh. I think you said it. So. <laughs> here we go. This will get to the bottom of it right here. Here we go. Let's watch it. This is. Uh, this is in California last week. Oh, boy. It's like a wolf. Is this the one I sent you? Yes. Oh, okay. Look at that thing. That looks like a wolf mid-evolution. Uh, if you're listening, it's a video from the news oh of a really um, scary looking one. What is that? Yeah. It's a, uh... <laughs> I just read the closed caption. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, it, it's a coyote with mange is what people are saying, but it looks, I understand if you ran into that at nighttime, you'd be like, oh my gosh, dude, that thing is it terrifying. definitely looking. doesn't look like the description that we were just seeing. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, that, that, that Wikipedia oh, right, right, of the right. Chupacabria mm-hmm. or whatever, it's, uh, <laughs> they ain't looking the same there. So This the, looks like a werewolf caught. He's like partial full moon. On the Wikipedia, it says that uh, in Hispanic America and Puerto Rico, it's generally described as a heavy creature, reptilian and alien-like, while in the southwestern U.S., it's always depicted as more dog-like. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So this fits like the American understanding of it. Mm. Do you think you could call any animal over to you? You know you call a dog. Like, <laughs> Some people think- just have it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they just relate to animals. Like yeah. That. You think you could do it? Uh, I think you know, you know people do lions and you go hit now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you think that's what you would do? Say you're backed in a corner uh-huh. with one of these a chupacabra, chupacabra, and you just go. <laughs> you say, "Hi!" No, you say, "Get one out of here!" Get on. Yeah, yeah, high five. <laughs> high five. <There> goes. <laughs> that thing's wild, though. That does look like a werewolf mid transition. Yeah, out here. yeah. Look at that back yeah. leg. Look how it's like. It's got two joints. He's just been through it, man. Yeah. It's a guy. The thing's just, had a rough life. Yeah. I think he put that thing out of its misery. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It almost looks like a half bat, half dog. It does. It really does. Bat dog. Maybe some yeah. kind of bat science dog. experiment gone wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Escape from a lab. Got, yeah. got loose. Some scientists were like, let's try yeah. to blend a dog and a, a bat together. <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Have they ever created an animal? Like a... Off, I mean, it's like doodle, I guess, labradoodles or dogs, you know, the breeds. Like, I wonder if they, yeah, you just start throwing some stuff together. Yeah, they're talking about bringing animals back that have gone ex- extinct. Yeah, they've like, been, they talk really about mammoth. that all the time. Is that is that actually going to happen? I mean, they're still talking about it. I've yeah. seen them grow we're up. put the woolly mammoth there. I was going to say, who gives birth to the woolly mammoth? I understand taking the DNA and cloning like a, a zygote. Maybe 3D print it. That's yeah. That's the part you. That's the part you understand. Not really under, not understand. Not understand. But it's like they say, I get that. That I mean, obviously DNA clone. Blah blah <laughs> no, blah. No, no, no. But no. who's gonna carry this man? I just don't know how they give birth to it. Where are you gonna put it? Kentucky. <laughs> Kansas uh, is a bit of land. That doesn't feel woolly mammothy. Uh, it needs to be colder. Kentucky it? feels it maybe because mammoth. Cave, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Kentucky feels like a good woolly mammoth. Oh, yeah. There. yeah. Maybe like where Aaron was at, do Edmonton, Alberta, yeah. up north oh, Alberta. Yeah. That's Rural where Canada, yeah. that's yeah. where you yeah. throw them up there. Yeah, because yeah. they need, they have fur, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, I think from a previous episode, we talked about it, and so, they're talk- it. talking about breeding just two really hairy elephants. <laughs> there we go. And then right. what's the hope? You know, like, we're trying to get, I bet there's someone that works there goes, we're basically trying to get an elephant with a jacket. 
a sweater. Long, long arms. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> elephant with long arms. <laughs> That's just a taller elephant. <laughs> yeah. At that point, it stands on its arms. Yeah. They, I think, you know, there's like a thing where they grew a human ear on the back of a rat, you know, to mm. like help, uh, you know, grow prosthetics for people. So I think, <laughs> yeah, look at this thing. That's like a Kramer's pig man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that thing. The Vacanti mouse was a laboratory mouse that had what looked like a human ear grown on its back. The ear was actually an ear-shaped cartilage structure grown by seeding cow cartilage cells into biodegradable ear-shaped mold and then implanted under the skin of the mouse. So I, an ear. Yeah. They built an ear on its back. Yeah, so, yeah, and he cut that thing off, put it on a person missing an ear. Wow. <laughs> what did it do? Get that rat ear. <laughs> <laughs> i mean but you gotta like for them to do all that so, like this is the stuff that i'm saying like they're like yeah so we're working on that you're like yeah what about cancer though like how many people how you said many, to stop cancer funding to search for the Loch Ness monster i'm saying you get something done yeah but i'm saying this is the problem they could do this ear thing and you're like how many people have one ear 30 40 <laughs> like i mean you're like oh, this is for all the people that are missing ears you're like well I mean, no one even we don't hear that much about the ears. So if you can Especially do if you're missing your ear, you don't hear <laughs> yeah. a lot about it. You don't hear a lot about it. So I'm not saying we don't ever want to <laughs> fix ears, but like, is that not a whole lab? We could be like, let's have you guys work on <laughs> some cancer. They go, now yeah. we're going to do the ear thing. Yeah, we're going to be growing noses next. They go, I read about a guy that has a, one nostril is all skin. So we're going to get a rat and then make a nostril hole. Mm. You're like, mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're trying to grow pig, uh, human parts with pigs too, like because no, they say the pig is the closest. Disgusting. In internally, the pig is the closest to being a human. I think, mm. like the organs and the. Did you ever dissect a pig or anything like that? A baby high school? pig. In yeah, high we did yeah. too. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. <laughs> We did that in Alabama. Where did y'all go to? Yeah, we, we were big into it in Alabama. Pigs? It was, was it like alive? maybe like this big. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I've never I, even heard of. We, yeah, we, we ate it for lunch later. Yeah, we, <laughs> we dissected a cat. Oh wow! What did you go? What was y'all's class was, at under your trailer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. We I dissected mean, it, a frog. We actually had. We, I think we did a frog. We had too. so many cats. I mean, everybody. Like, I think it was two people would have a cat. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. like there was a lot of cats. Oh, I thought you were gonna say two cats well, to every person. They, was it like a fully grown cat or like yeah, a cat fetus? Like a fully or? grown cat. I don't think I did mine because I think I was like I was like I can't do this. It's uh -huh. so disgusting. Yeah, so it gross. is gross. Well, I, he's not gonna pig, be doing science stuff. I remember doing the pig being like, "This looks like a human being." Yeah, yeah, you know. Just it's laid out its arms and legs and everything. Oh. We did owl pellets. Did you ever do that? I don't. Oh, maybe we did. We yeah. see little insects in uh -huh. there. Yeah, skulls and stuff yeah. in there. Yeah, and uh -huh. then uh, you're a scientist. Worms, yeah. frogs, on, and guys. then yeah, pig was the big one though. I did a lot brutal. of animals. Yeah, we dissected a bunch. Where? In school in Alabama. Yeah, in school. That's crazy. I never even thought that different states would. We did a frog, and yeah. that was it. We did a worm too. Did you do the worm? Yeah, so yeah, the worm. worm. You There's a good back. chance yeah, I never down. made it up to this level of <laughs> this, this is fifth. Grade. This is fifth grade. We did the owl. Oh, part. I was in high school. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah pig, I, was, I think mine was my senior yeah. year. It was the, my frog. The pig was high school. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was tenth grade for me. Anatomy mm -hmm. was the class. Yeah. I was tenth mm -hmm. grade, but yeah. it was biology. Yeah. I think. So there's. Uh, I did not like it, and I'm not grossed out easily. But the formaldehyde smell, oh, I think. Oh yeah. And then the the cats also had; they were real fat, so you really had to cut <laughs> through all this oh, fatty. Gosh. Oh, Jesus. oh it was so gross. I was <laughs> like, fur. Now I think they had taken the fur off or Ugh. something. Did anybody ever do the joke where they go, "Where'd you get this cat at?" <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Very fun one. Thank you to our friends at Helix Sleep. Lucky for you there, Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. We've talked about it a lot on the podcast. We all have Helix mattresses. We all love them. We all love the pillows. It is our favorite premium mattress brand with tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. Their lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, the new Helix Elite Collection, a mattress, mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. They offer a 100-night free trial 
to try out your new Helix mattress, and they offer a 10- to 15-year warranty, dependent on the model. They also support military, first responders, teachers, and students by giving them a special discount on-site. By supporting Helix, you are allowing them to continue supporting the Nate Land Podcast. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. For our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash Nate and use code HELIXPARTNER20. That's Helix Partner 20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. This isn't uh, mythical. This was real. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, the movie Jungle Book was a, was about a boy that was raised by wolves. Mm-hmm. Oh. This is actually, that. well, that part's not real. That oh. was a, you never seen the Jungle Book? Yeah. I have seen it. Uh, Mowgli? 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 Yeah. There was a real life love that movie. A uh, person that was raised by wolves, and he was found by some guys. His name is Dina Sanchar, D I N A S A N I C H A R. How does he have a name? Well, after he was found, <laughs> <laughs> prior to that, his name was Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they found oh, him in a cave raised man. by wolves. Oh, can you blow that picture up? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to that yeah. much. But, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, he's kind of posing like a wolf, too. Poor yeah. guy. They said he never mm. caught on to most things that <laughs> yeah. we do. He did uh, pick up smoking, though. How, <laughs> did he really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Buster's has already probably needed it, yeah. if I'll be honest. Yeah. How yeah. old was he? I mean, I know they might not be able to know the na- age exactly. Around six. Oh, when they found him, he was around six? Yeah. yeah. Well, he said he's 1860 or 1861 to 95. Well, he lived to be 35, I think, but... I think he was around six when they found yeah. Why not just leave him with the wolves? He seemed to be like doing all right. <laughs> when he arrived at the orphanage, he reportedly walked on all fours and ate raw meat. Yeah, it's like the dude's being raised by wolves and you go, let's get you out of here and get you into an orphanage mm-hmm. so some other kids can pick on you. <laughs> I, I still feel like that was the right thing to do. I say let yeah. him stay with the wolves. Uh-huh. <laughs> He'll just leave a six-year-old out there with the wolves. But you survived six he years for with 20 the years. Yeah. Yeah. He died of tuberculosis. Yeah. Probably from the smoke. Yeah, he would have been fine out there with the wolves. <laughs> and there's a woman, this was recently. She's I still live, I want to live with wolves. She's still alive that was raised. By the way, guess what's been rolling for forty years <laughs> when they found this guy. <laughs> guy lives with wolves. Forty years deep. In OAA. <laughs> Noah's going, man. Noah was rolling. <laughs> There's a woman named Oksana Malaya. O-X-A-N-A. Can you look her up? Yeah. M-A-L-A-Y-A. She was raised by dogs, and, and she's still alive. This was within the last you know few years, I think. And they found her. She's doing good now. I think she has a boyfriend. And oh, that's nice. Oh my no gosh. picture of her, though, huh? No, there's some video no. of her. Oh, yeah. Um. Uh, we'll find her. I'd like to get an idea. I mean, you got a boyfriend. I'd like to see what she's looking like. You know, <laughs> yeah. Now. She's doing well now. Oh, she's like a normal. Well, I mean, relatively speaking, there she yeah. is. Uh, oh, yeah. It was difficult for her to shed her dog-like tendencies. I bet. Get out. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Rub my belly. Because the, the boyfriend <laughs> has, get off the couch, right? Get off the couch. <laughs> and she's like, sorry. <laughs> but she's doing good. I think she's, you know, adjusted and... Like I said, she, she may be She's married. found but. at 23. I can't remember when they found her, but she's... She was living with dogs for 23 years, and you're like, let's get this girl a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they took her straight from the dogs to meet a guy. She was on a dating site the next day, but... She does not like to be called dog girl. Oh, that's fair. Uh, you, got- you know what? That is fair. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on, Malaya. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> dog girl. <laughs> what did, uh, how did she get started in with dogs? Uh, I forgot. Um, I think her mom abandoned her or something. And, mm. um, I mean, all that stuff's really sad, obviously, but yeah, I'm just right, saying, if right. you, if you, if you're a, a kid, and you survive for six years with wolves. I mean, that's your that's some peak that's some peak learning years. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're like, yeah, I got to get you into an orphanage, man. And it's like, I just feel like that would be oh, she really was reunited hard. Reunited with her father. She got reunited with her father in two thousand three. There's a documentary about this. I might watch this. Huh. This is amazing. How old was you when she was re- 
I mean, like her father's holding her there. Is that how old she was when? Oh, and they let no. her. They let her down and said, "Go on, get out of here." <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, uh, I mean, that's crazy. You know, she's still it running. Is crazy. Her. Okay, so it so most experts agree that children generally have until five to learn to speak before the brain loses the capacity to develop language. So she must have picked up a little bit before yeah. she was cast mm -hmm. out with the dogs, or else there's no way she, she'd be able to pick it up. If you don't, so you don't learn language by the time you're five, you just can't learn it? Evidently. Wow. You I obviously, mean, but you can learn a second language. But you have to know the first one. Yeah, just I guess. I mean, this is that doesn't look Probably like a very reputable website. Speech but development, but Probably even how to say the words. I don't think people really learn. I don't know, but I don't think they really learn second language as well as adults, right? Like it's best if you learn it. As That's true. Kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, is she playing basketball there. Is she on the sideline right there. What are you talking about? Oh, that looks like a basketball jersey. No, I think it looks like she's sitting on. She's off warming to the, the bench. Yeah, what? she's off. Is she's Air Bud. Yeah, like yeah. that's the true story of Air Bud <laughs> right <Yeah>. there. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the, that's what they could get on. <laughs> you ever tried to put a sweater on a dog and then he's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Malaya, we'd love to have you on Whoa. the pod. We'd yeah. love to have We're, you on the pod. Yeah, that is terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. But mm. uh <laughs> Imagine the guy date. I mean, the guy <laughs> that he goes, I got a date tonight. Oh, who with? <laughs> Malaya, the dog girl. <laughs> hey. <laughs> she doesn't like that. Hey, that's my girl you're talking about. Because <laughs> <laughs> I go to a nice dinner. <laughs> I take steak. She'd like hers in a bowl. <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Table for one. I'll Table just have her around, the, around my legs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 She's under the table. <laughs> yeah. Bless her heart. I mean, they got sure her tails her. wagging. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Thunderbirds. You guys heard of Thunderbirds? Ford. The car? There's cars. There's sports teams mm -hmm. i never thought what that meant t-birds from greece yep that's native americans have all often had this legend of thunderbirds and they've had drawings of this giant bird that uh comes out of the sky and in of all places tombstone arizona uh there's a newspaper article about some ranchers that had a giant bird swoop down that they described like a pterodactyl and they said they killed it and um there wasn't a picture in that particular newspaper with the story, but I haven't seen that one. But there's a different one of guys who said a better one than that. That might be the worst quality picture I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a good one. There's a <laughs> really good one. No, I'm, I'm well, what? no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that one right there. Oh, what that one? This one. Oh, oh that's a pterodactyl. Yeah. That feels like an AI generated picture. It either. does, dude. It's probably fake, but yeah. they did that in... The 1800s. I mean, that picture's been around for a while. Has yeah. it? At least 10, 15 years. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's a dragon. 126 years ago. You yes. don't think it's a pterodactyl? Yeah. Uh, 1890. Well, I think pterodactyls are, are dragons. 70 years 1890. In. And guess what? <laughs> 70, 70 years. years. I mean, an old company. <laughs> This is what they were. That's how early they got older started. than Apple is right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How? Yeah. Like older than Microsoft. Older than all this. They stuff. weren't even. Well, no, they weren't even thought about. I thought you meant older than an actual Apple, which they might be. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I'm heck? saying back then it was older than those companies are now. Oh yeah, These companies yeah. that are like so ingrained in our oh, life. Oh, like Apple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How old? Yeah, Apple's not. 70 yeah what 40 years old 70 yeah yeah <laughs> noah was was double <laughs> the length of apple and and then and then they didn't they didn't swing on up to arizona and go let's take a look at that bird yeah where are they at on this why does yeah. it not have a report that noah came up and checked it out they go well was it in the atmosphere they go, then it's not going and they're not like our concern the people back then are like the what yeah <laughs> yeah like i would think in 1823 you would have more of what we did no so 
Yeah. It'd be more like national only, ocean stuff only. Like you'd be, <laughs> that's how they're naming stuff back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they've it's celebrated Slars. 200 years. Slars and some lake stuff. Some lake and river stuff. Some lake and river stuff. Well, I'll probably get a lot of hateful comments on this About podcast. About what? No, yeah. I'll get some hateful ones. I think we both will, I'll I think. let Joanna Marie Zimmerman down. We both will. This is just how Dusty and I talk to each other. Yeah, we've been on a lot of road trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah, no, I think it went good. I've always known that Aaron believed this way, and he's known that I believe <laughs> yeah, this way. Yeah. I mean, this is mm-hmm. not new. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I just have Brian here to instigate it. I know. And yeah. Nate making, yeah, yeah. you know, desperate attempts to be like, let's get back to jokes, guys. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think it was bad. No, nah, no, nah, we're having a good time. Yeah, we're, it doesn't, we are, we're just we are having a good time. Man, we're not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. Not, I mean... We don't have your mic plugged in. We never have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We can't. We can never afford to do that. Yeah, it's too risky. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I got to get ready for Manny Guest. Yeah. It's uh, exciting. Uh, Crazy. Yeah. I'm Crazy. in uh, Iowa this week. It's the two two of the rescheduled shows from the SNL thing. So uh, I'll be, uh, yeah, there this week. And then New Year's Eve in uh, Sunrise, Florida. Uh, doing uh, the arena there. It's uh, me. Uh, I'll be headlining. Then my dad and, and uh, Mike Vecchione, Greg Warren, Joe Zimmerman. Jeez. Uh, yeah. It's a and then Julian McCullough hosting. It's yeah. I challenge uh-huh. you to find. I mean, uh-huh. like if you it, pound for pound, that show is going to be ridiculous. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. It's I mean going to be insane. So it's uh we're we're very pumped about that. Uh so yeah, we'll be down there. Uh this Friday I'm with Henry Cho at the Shoals Theater in Florence, Alabama. It's a cool theater. Yeah, and then I'm back on the Christmas party circuit. There we go. Going to Delaware for the first time oh, ever. Right. Never been to Delaware. I'm there Saturday and Sunday in Dover, Delaware. All right. That's awesome. This weekend I'm in Tampa, Florida at Side Splitter. All right. Great club. Comedy Club. Yeah, great club. Love it yeah. down there. I'm down That's here awesome. all weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then one more thing. I'm at Zanies. I'm co-headlining Zanies with two friends of mine, Laura Peak and KC Shornima. KC's right. a writer on SNL. Laura oh, Peak's yeah. in LA, a regular at the store. They're both funny. All weekend at Zanies, December 22nd and 23rd, like Christmas weekend. So you're trying right. to Oh yeah. Triple, co- yeah. Well, Triple co- feature. doesn't only mean two, does it? I thought it did. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, I'll be December 18th. I'm at Zanies doing a you show. Well, we're co-hosts of the podcast. I don't yeah. think we are though. I think we're you tri-host. Are. Quad no, host. No, he says co-host. Well, I think it's wrong. Oh, oh he doesn't. He's never co-headlined. He's never <laughs> uh, yeah, December 18th, I'll be at Zanies. Uh, hot show. I'm New sorry, Year's. go ahead. New, I'm, yeah, I'm just going with it. Yeah. And um, uh, New Year's Salt Lake City, Wise Guys. Oh, uh, yeah. awesome. I got a little time off, uh, so that's fun. Could yeah. be working, but you're... But I am taking the time off. Feels you're, good. Yeah, it's your choice. Yeah, I'm gonna be around, just hanging out with the family. I'm gonna be out on the land. I'm building some, building some things for the land that I'll be filming. How much time are you taking off? Uh, just two weekends. Oh, good. Yeah, not that. Yeah, I'll be back New Year's. I'm doing, I'm doing a show actually. You know, yesterday and then uh, on Monday, December 18th at Zanies in Nashville, and then New Year's. Mm-hmm. So okay, it's gonna be great. Right. I mean, we're having a great time. Having a great time. January sixteenth, this special's coming out, and I think Dude. I'm yeah, I think I'm gonna we're be fun, very man. busy. So yeah. I'm uh I'm enjoying a little time off before. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, January sixteenth, Netflix, start of the year. I mean, that's gonna yeah. be fun. Yeah. Just you know, getting the year going and just pop in. It's gonna be a big yeah. year for you to see. It's a big yeah. year, dude. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm pumped. We're pumped, yeah. guys. We're having a good time. If I don't get canceled after this podcast no, episode, no. and uh, now nah, we're having a good time. No, yeah, <laughs> I think you would have already been. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a shock to anyone. Actually, it's probably no. nothing that I've never not said on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your own podcast. I mean, you even go more into it. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably do some extensive explaining about this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have like, me on. We'll yeah. Hash it out. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go hash it out over mm-hmm. there. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll be back though before the year. Yeah, you'll be. Yeah. Uh, you'll be here next week. Yeah, I'm here next week. All right, and then uh, all right. So I'll see you then. And but this is the last time all four of us will be. I think for like a month. Because you're going to be out a couple. Dusty's going to be out a couple. So mm-hmm. 
I'll miss you guys, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you. some one of us will be here, one of us not, as all four of us, so we won't be uh, till after New Year's. Yeah, there won't be any quad headlining till Quad after. headlining till after, <laughs> after New Year's. I mean, New quad Year. hosting, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, as a group, guys, happy New Year. Congrats on everything. Uh, we love you, as always. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. All right, bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.